two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. Doing a little something different today. Uh, we haven't done a thinking stream in a long time, so I figured it was overdue. And last time we tried to play Space Crusade, we didn't have uh, anybody. We have to pre-plan those games because it's not as popular as HeroQuest. That's a fact. So, yeah, um, we didn't do the rant cast this week, and that's not anything, you know, bad or anything. Um, the rant cast, I just want to clarify, is not just for negativity. I mean, there's good things to be passionate about as well in the world of gaming. Cheers, dead gamer. But, um, I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of negativity right now with the Dungeons and Dragons stuff going on and I know a lot of people are bummed about that and upset and yeah I just want to kind of keep that to the rant cast but I don't want to like go back over it because I mean we had some really great streams already covering um, quite a bit of that with um, I care I think a nightbird and also with strange bus and uh, so that was good I mean some venting but also some things that just had needed to be said um, as far as that community goes and that franchise goes. And I know some people are upset with Hasbro in general. Not just because of Dungeons and Dragons, but also uh, Magic the Gathering and other stuff. So I'm hoping that that doesn't leak into HeroQuest. I mean, he HeroQuest is being handled pretty well, I think, right now. And so we all hope that that doesn't touch on it. But I mean, you know, if there's some people out there that are just like, listen, until they get this sorted out, or, you know, they're just done with done with Hasbro in general. Like I can respect that. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of with them, but I mean, if you disagree with me on that, I mean, no worries. Um, it's not like that's going to be a polarizing issue for the Discord or anything like that. So you're free to believe what you want and you know, follow what you think is best for your hobby. Um, because for me, it's about the games. It's about the fun. And I mean, I've said it before. Regardless of what happens with HeroQuest, I mean, we kept the fan community going for 30 years without anything, any support from the company, and we could do it for another 30 years without them, if need be. I mean, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but that's how I see it. So anyway, yeah, my copy of um, Age of the Mirror arrived, and um, I spray-painted my ogres, because I thought they lo would look better with the dark blue, and they did. And I was thinking, gee, I should have spray painted all my figures. But then I was remembering, oh, well, you can't get custom colors as easily. And, you know, the spray cans, those rattle cans don't last forever. So, I mean, acrylic paint doesn't last forever either. But it seems to last a lot, lot longer. I mean, those cans that I have them, they'll, like, burst after a while and lose their, their quality. And I was just in uh, a store... <laughs> a certain big box retail store and you go to the spray paint section and I was looking for a very specific color they have this iridescent stuff and this is segueing into my uh, craft stream here and welcome to HeroQuest fans by the way um, the uh, the deal is like it's this color changing spray you spray it on and use a black base coat or whatever and it is like shiny and kind of cool looking so I thought oh yeah that'd be great and I saw, I was in a hobby, specialized hobby store, and I saw they had it, but it was like those little bitty cans, those little tiny cans. And I thought, well, it might not be enough for the project that I need. So I was thinking, oh, I can just go to this big box re retail store, and they would have like the big cans. And they didn't have, they had like this glittery one that wasn't quite what I wanted. And they had this other like fluorescent stuff. So I thought, oh, this would be cool. I'll check it out. But there's an unfortunate tendency at this particular store that people will spray the stuff. I don't know if they're trying to get high, and I don't recommend doing that. That's a good way to destroy brain cells. Don't do it. Um, the other is maybe they just they really want to know what the color looks like, so they spray it in the store, like on the shelf. So there's all this stuff. So I always check to see, well, has someone sprayed this one yet? Because I don't want one that's already been sprayed. So I was trying to get the lid off this thing, and it wouldn't come off, and then it sprayed in my hand, and I was like, oh, great. <laughs> so... Anyway, um, I think I've got one of those little uh, black light flashlights. You might be able to see my... Let me just turn the light off here. Let 
yeah, you can still see the residue on my fingers. So, caught red-handed, or green-handed. So, anyway. But it looks invisible. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. But it's not quite the product I was looking for. Anyway. So, the other thing that I was picking up at the hobby store, I've been looking at these for a while, these Gundam markers. Yeah, they were 20 bucks. And I thought, you know what, I... I'm not a great painter, but I'm not so bad that I need this as like a crutch to like, you know, uh, paint the stuff with, with markers. But then I thought, well, this might be cool for like doing lettering on these. So I'm going to see if maybe this is like I just got ripped off or if this is a good idea. So it's Japanese. That doesn't necessarily mean it's good or not, but um, they, they recommend it for models, for like Gundam models. So what you're seeing before you, this is a sprue from uh, Warhammer 40,000 Fireteam, which was half off at a certain uh, book retailer, and so I took advantage of that. Not because I care about Fireteam, I mean the reviews were pretty bad, they said it was like a, a dumbed down kill team, which itself wasn't that great. If you're going to play 40k, play 40k, but I'm, I don't have the budget to play 40k, so I thought oh, I could use these as proxies for Space Crusade, and then I don't want to paint my vintage figures, but I will paint these. So these came in, like, blue plastic, and there was, like, one of these per set, and I actually spray-painted this a deeper blue, so it was kind of more of a purple before, and I've actually been working on this. And, of course, I'm not a world-class painter, so I'm not claiming this is great work or anything. But what I'm going for is just something that looks looks decent on the board to me. So I'll just kind of show you what this looks like here. Of course, the lighting is totally off. It looks too yellow, but anyway. So I used uh, a gloss. It's all blurry. I'm pretty sure this is auto-focused. Let's, uh, let's adjust the camera. Okay, that's pretty good. So yeah, so you've got this really glossy spray paint, and I let that cure for a couple of days, so it's got a nice hard coat on it. And I used, let me just show you the colors that I was using. Actually, let me grab my spray paint. And I know this is not the way the pros do it, but I just was experimenting with different things, and it was cheap, so I don't mind. bag here but yeah these are space marines for Warhammer 40,000 okay so this is the paint here, let me just adjust this, here. this is the paint that I used on my hero quest uh, mage of the mirror remake ogres so it's matte ink blue so it's Krylon, um, and it's got kind of a matte finish. I think it looked really good. I kind of screwed up when I was painting it because I was painting them like top down, um, and I missed like the armpit area of the ogres, so they had like this kind of like gray patch. And I sprayed it again, but it's like I still missed like a couple of little spots. But honestly, you can't see it unless you're like studying it up close. Dark on dark, it was kind of tough. So, but anyway, I think it adheres really well. And on one of them, I think I sprayed too much, so there was a little bit of like texturing on the base. But honestly, it's it's not that bad, and it was fine for what I was gonna do. So I wasn't gonna redo it. Excuse me. So that's what I used there. And then for these um, Space Marine sprues, I used this stuff. This Rust-Oleum 
2x ultra cover paint plus primer gloss with deep blue and i checked and it's you know you can use it for plastic so you spray it you wait 20 minutes you wait an hour and then you're supposed to wait five to seven days um i did i think with this i just did one coat so i barely sprayed anything on and it was mostly just to change the color a little bit because it was just a little bit purple to my eyes so i did it to make it a little blue and also give it some gloss especially on these flat areas cheers once again dead gamer okay so other stuff that i did on here to show you what i used so cheap craft paints i use this jet black apple barrel matte acrylic water-based acrylic for the guns. I just painted them flat black. Originally, I was gonna spray paint them gloss black, and I thought about taking a sheet of uh, like saran wrap, like plastic wrap, and cutting little holes just for the guns and spraying it. But then I thought, well, I'll just take uh, painter's tape, this stuff, and I'll just like cover it all except for the guns and the swords, and I'll spray paint those black. And I did it on the yellow sprue, I'll show you. So I got three copies of this game to get the miniatures out of them. And I'm keeping the game too. I'll probably play it sometime, but maybe with modifications. So I spray painted another one of them red. And so this is Colonial Red. Gloss, once again, the Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer Ultra Cover, blah, blah, blah. Not a paid promotion, just showing you what I used. I tried to get a color that, I mean, it looked kind of a darker red, kind of a blood red, I thought would be good for, like, uh, Blood Angels, Ultramarines. And then for the Imperial Fist, this is the one where I screwed up. This was yellow. And this one, this was the only yellow they had at the store at the time, but I was in a hurry, so I just, I just bought it. It's uh, actually yellow ginger. And it's high gloss, so it's super shiny. And the rust oleum, so super shiny. So I did not need this high gloss. I could have gotten regular. I could have gotten more of like a maybe a oh, uh, school bus yellow or like a lemon yellow or something like that. But this was all they had. So, but I mean, now that I've done it, I don't think it looks too bad, especially on camera, which is what matters to me, because this is the type of thing I'd be using in a game that I would be recording. So yeah, this is the one I screwed up on. So I'll show you. See how black the guns are? So I actually spray, sprayed those in gloss black and I got gloss gloss black like overspray on a couple of the shoulder pod lawns. So I retouched those with auric gold, which is one of these. I don't have very many of these Citadel colors. They're so expensive and I've had bad experiences in the past with like the stuff drying up because the tops don't fit airtight well enough. And for the amount that I'm spending on them, I think, gee, <laughs> I'd rather get these craft paints and it's like, well, if this stuff dries up, oh well. It's not that big a deal. I mean, I've got this too. I've got this, uh, I had to special order this Retributor armor. And honestly, I was looking for a really goldy gold and I got this stuff because it was recommended to me by some people online. Honestly, a much better gold is this stuff. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is some cheap crap from China. It's not going to be any good. I thought I might be getting, wasting my money, but actually it was really good. This thing, it's just like maybe like 1% better than the other gold pen that I have. It's almost chrome. It's really, really shiny gold, but it's not quite chrome. But I mean, I would compare it in quality to this, this liquid chrome. This is silver. This actually has a mirror finish. This does not have a mirror finish, but it's really, really, really shiny. And I really like it. So until they have a true gold chrome, this is probably the best that I've tried. So anyway, and this gold pen came in a pack. So there was like bigger ones. These tend to like leak everywhere and they're kind of messy, but um, it's like, it's actually, uh, I think it's a, a metallic pigment that's mixed into like a gold, uh, a jelly rubbery medium, kind of like rubber cement almost. And so you can just slop it on and just let it dry. But if you if you touch it up with your fingers, it's gonna like lose its finish unless you use, I think it's uh, 
Liquitex gloss varnish, high gloss varnish, which comes with this giant like bottle. It's very expensive. But again, people online were recommending it for that stuff and they said, well, that's really the only stuff you can use that won't lose that mirror finish. So I've got other paints. Um, the set also came with, so the normal set just comes with one sprue of like five Space Marines and there's alternate heads in here. So I guess in case you lose some of the heads or you want to swap them out, they give them to you. So three sets, so those three, oops, <laughs> dropping stuff everywhere. Uh, I got the red, the yellow, and the blue for the three factions. They also give you these, this like double sprue of Necrons. Necrons are like the androids. I thought, oh, Space Crusade has those too. These guys were a pain to assemble. Like I assembled a few of them and I stupidly cut the pieces out ahead of time instead of looking at the chart because they're slightly different. And each figure is like five to eight pieces. These are like five pieces. I think the Marines are like six to eight pieces to assemble one guy. I mean, think about Space Crusade, it's two pieces. The weapon, which is meant to be swapped out, the guy and the base. Whereas these, you gotta like piece them together. And they're, they've got like little like numbers on there. And I think A and B is supposed to be like alternate. So if you wanna have the long gun or the short gun, for these guys, you can decide. And so if you go on eBay, you'll find like all the unused like parts that other people have used after they've done their Warhammer stuff. So I'm totally new to this, this particular hobby. I don't plan to spend much more money on it than I already have with this. So I'm totally a noob at this, so people are snickering, whatever. But anyway, um, I really like how this turned out with this uh, chrome. It's not true chrome, as you see. It's, it's not like a mirror finish. It's just super, super bright, shiny silver. And I knew that going in. That's how it would be. This particular silver, you're actually supposed to spray it on glass. It's this Krylon premium metallic original chrome. You're supposed to spray it on glass and then like flip it over so like the other side is like the shiny part. But I have nothing to use it for. So I thought rather than just, just let it just collect dust, I was gonna try it out. And I, I really like the way it looks. And it has a nice, it dried really quickly. It has um, a nice smooth finish. So anyway, that's that. It's almost perfect. It's like, what else would I need to add to these guys? Maybe some glowy eyes, maybe some, I mean, you're supposed to put like little green stuff on their gun. I know you don't, you can paint them any way you want to. You don't have to use cannon colors or whatever. But anyway, here's the, uh, here's the first screw. This was, as you can see, several of these are popped out because I was actually starting to work on them. They're supposed to be push fit, so you don't need any glue. Um, but there's some of them, I mean, these little tiny pegs, it was kind of hard to do them. Let's see what we've got here. So I wanted some variations because I had way too many Necrons. I, I basically got the set for the Marines, but there's like 10 in each sprue, so I've got 30 of these guys. And then there's these little scarab guys you're supposed to use too. So I use this stuff, this Rust-Oleum Metallic Brilliant Metal Finish. Where's the... Uh, say the name of the color just brilliant metal finish okay but it's kind of like a, a glittery gold kind of a beige gold I actually got this for an automotive project and I only needed like a tiny bit of it so it's just been sitting here and I thought great I mean if you can use stuff that's just just collecting dust just kind of like finding found objects and using those as uh, projects I feel like you're coming out ahead you're not spending extra money you don't need for <laughs> I mean for for games you know just saving money on it and you know they say all these sprue bits you can cut this up and use it as stuff I don't know what I would use it for but I don't think I'll hang on to it now I noticed uh, there's all these spots where it's not like hero quest where you can just twist it right off I mean yes you can with the heads like these little heads but most pieces you've actually got to clip it off so I used the scissors the first time that was a bad idea because it left chunks behind supposed to use these clippers and I realized oh I've got like lots of clippers I wouldn't even have to buy any special like hobby clippers so I'll be using those from here on but anyway yeah look at the at the charts and graphs first before you start clipping them out make sure you get the exact ones to put together 
So I learned that the hard way, but you know, it's a, it's a new hobby thing. Just learn how to do it. And then this one, I had fun with this one. So I had some white uh, Rust-Oleum and it was basically I used up the can because there's hardly any white left in there. I got it for this other project. I was trying to make like cardboard stormtrooper armor for Halloween. And it just, it, not a lot would come out of the can. So I don't know if it was defective or what, but I was just spraying it and spraying it and spraying it, trying to get like a thick white coating. And it just, I used up almost all of it on that project. So I had just a tiny bit left. And so it was just like running out. I could tell it running out as I was spraying it. And I just spray this stuff on cardboard and it's winter. So I just spray the stuff and I like wait like five minutes and then I quickly like carry it inside and put it somewhere where the fumes aren't gonna like be nasty let it air out but anyway I did white and this is a really like sandy chalky kind of feel to it oh yeah these are these scarab things that come with it too I don't know what I'll use those for but anyway I, I use some glow-in-the-dark paint too and no I'm not gonna be playing the game in the dark but I just it's just kind of a fun feature so I got this stuff long ago for like a safety thing. I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna spray some of my like gear for like backpackings for like travel. So when you go outside, you know, your stuff will glow. You won't lose it. Maybe it's you know, safer for cars. Actually, those reflective tape is much better than this. But anyway, I've got it. I, was, I always like glow in the dark stuff. So I sprayed that over, over the white. And you can see that there's actually some uh, dark areas it's not like pure white I mean it's kind of like this looks like what people do when they just oh I'm spraying some primer on and then they spray like they spray white then they spray black then they start doing the colors so this looks like the first stage of somebody else's project so you can see there's like gray areas but I, I don't actually mind I, I was thinking like oh yeah they kind of look like a white like they had white armor but it's like weathered so I'm easy to impress, I guess, when it comes to painting. I mean, it's simple. I, I like the, I guess I like bright colors and maybe it's the fumes from the paint that just like convinces me, oh, it's done. Just want to get to the game. So yeah, I don't know how much more detail I'm going to add to these Necrons, probably very little. But am I going to sit here and assemble these on the stream? Probably not. It'll be like a five hour stream and I'll be like angry. <laughs> maybe people would be entertained by that. I don't know. But back to the uh, back to the Marines. So, as you can see, it's it's not a really bright yellow. Just try to adjust it here. Yeah, so you can see there's there's like little dings, and little uh, darkened areas where there was overspray, a couple spots. That's okay, it's kind of like weathering, rather than adding my own weathering. So for this stuff, I different fans have put out different paint, you know, excuse me, painted examples, and different, um, I don't know, canonical Warhammer stuff. I mean, they say, oh, you should use this color and then this color. There's, there's no one-size-fits-all universal set, so I just thought, I'll just use what I think looks cool. Kind of something to remind me of, of the game using ideas other people put out there so for kind of the main color for like these crests that they have because it's all kind of generic and you just add your own to it um, I use this metallic red bright red metallic bright red this is plaid folk art acrylic it's got that little symbol on it so this I think this is actually for like glass and stuff but I wanted it to give a give it kind of a metallic look. These um, these are the the chain swords that I spray painted black. So you can see the black underneath. And you can see the overspray. Uh, again, with a rattle can, not with an airbrush, because I don't have an airbrush. Um, I used I covered it up with this uh, with this retributor armor. Originally, I used the uh, auric gold auric armor citadel but I thought this was better I didn't want it to be super bright 
I wasn't gonna do. I wasn't gonna use the gold pen to make you know, super shiny gold. I don't know. I kind of got that idea when I was doing the orcs, when I was painting the orcs. I thought they have all these like teeth, or teeth <laughs> these fangs that they've taken from other orcs and they use it as money that it's like hanging from their armor. But I painted those gold because I thought, oh, it's like a gold tooth. But anyway, you can see there are these little honor badges. I call them honor badges. I guess they're like purity marks or something. In the 40k lore, it's supposed to show that there's they're, they've been checked to make sure they're not corrupted by chaos. But that little red and then that white. I was going to go over it again with the antique white, but this is this apple barrel gloss white acrylic. There's the antique white. I'm not sure where I put it. Oh, anyway, I'm going to go back over it dirty it up a little bit but the red stuff that is just simply um, oh it's just big bright red yeah this one got too close to my stove so it melted a little bit so I taped it up but yeah this is just bright red matte paint these are really cheap to get these and I'm probably gonna use some of that for the mouth of the character yeah, so as you can see, there's trim on these, uh, on these pod, pod lawns or shoulder armor, whatever you want to call them. I'm using the wrong terms. But for that, I use the metallic again. And it looks like maybe I did a wash or something with that. I did not. That's just the natural effect of the dark purplish blue of the original plastic with then the, the ginger yellow ultra gloss spray paint. The, I did I did a single pass with the paint the first time, and those little seams were green. And then after like 48 hours, I did another pass, and so now they're kind of black. So I think they look pretty decent. I don't feel like I have to do much more to those, really. Yeah, so that's a spray-painted gun right there. I can get a little light on it. Yeah, so I, I wanted a really shiny black gun, but I realized that on camera it would be maybe completely like gone, it could disappear. But it, it's a nice contrast with the with the yellow, because really I could have done anything. I could have just left it yellow. I could have made it silver. Could have made it gold. Could have made it like a rustic, um, you know, gunmetal type color. But I just I wanted the shiny black. I may not add any detail to it at all. I mean, so for, for the orc guns, I put like little silver accents and things, weathering. And then for the orc boss, I put, you know, bright shiny gold, like a pimp gun or something. <laughs> so anyway, there's the crest and everything. A couple of these, let's see, there's one where I got some overspray and I tried to like fix it. Oh yeah, this guy here. As you can see, there's some, some oddly colored patches on there. That's because of uh, overspray from the black, black spray paint. So I used the auric gold to kind of patch it up. And I thought, oh, you know, it could be just like the guy's armor got damaged and he kind of patched it up with some, some repair stuff or something. So I started putting some auric gold on these little details. I'll probably do more of that. As far as the helmets, I mean, I've seen people put like red eyes on there. I thought, well, maybe I could put like black eyes, like like goggles or something. It'll look kind of like a bug or something. I'm not really 100% sure what I'm going to do there. For this, this is supposed to be a plasma gun. Here, I applied this this liquid chrome, this um, Molotov. I always forget the name. It's Molotov, not a Molotov cocktail, but Molotov. They make these. It used to be 10 bucks, and now it's. I think 11 or 12 bucks. So the price has gone up with inflation, but the paint pen, but it's it's liquid chrome. And it's really good, and I've I've bought multiple of these because I've used them up, like doing on various projects. But basically, you want this stuff to cure for like eight days, and if you're gonna cover it with uh, protective stuff, you want to use the uh, Liquitex high gloss varnish. Um, but anyway. Yeah, this one had some overspray on it, so I put some auric on there too. Auric armor. Just kind of cover it up. 
so yeah, a few patches. But yeah, we these spots where you have to clip it out of the plastic, those are going to be leave dark blue holes. Uh, well, I guess it'd be white because we bet we break the plastic off the styrene or whatever it is. It leaves like kind of a whitish residue, but I can just touch that up. Thankfully, most of the joints are in inconspicuous places, like at the bottom of the foot, um, the neck spike, you know, the back of the backpack or whatever. But I mean, I do have some paint that I can use to touch that up. I have some yellow paint. I even thought maybe I could just spray some of the spray paint on a little patch of something and just like dab my brush in it and just quickly like cover it up. I don't know. I won't do that on the stream because I'm not going to spray in the house. But anyway, I kind of like how this turned out. But yeah, I've been working on this like uh, off and on all day, pretty much. Yeah, I saw you some of that more of that auric armor. Hey, Ribby. Sorry if I wasn't paying attention. I, I'm just talking about my progress so far. So when I brushed on that um, that liquid chrome, it obviously didn't turn out chrome. I think I think this this thing is like running low, and when it's running low, it like it doesn't have all the mixture in there, so it just has kind of like this not the shiny part, but like just the gray silver. But I thought you know it looks pretty good actually with the, like the black undercoat. So it's like that's the plasma gun, that's the two red dice, and with the chain swords, uh, the little teeth on the chain swords, I just. I went over that a few times with the with the chrome pen. This is my good one. I've marked it so that I know this this is the one that's got the most left in it. Yeah, so that's working so far. And then you've got the head of the of the commander. I kind of don't like that the commanders don't have helmets on. I just think it's very important to wear your helmet in combat. But I know they do it because these are like the heroes. And they, uh, they're the guy that, you know, he's the pretty actor. He has to be on camera. So I was trying to vary the skin tones for the three guys because of the way they looked in the computer game. So obviously I haven't done anything. He looks like a baby. I haven't done anything else with him. I haven't uh, given him any eyes. I haven't given him any teeth or the mouth. But it's probably going to be really simple. In my understanding of the game, I would imagine these guys would either they would have a helmet that would just like fold up over the top, kind of like in the movie Stargate, or they'd have like a fishbowl bubble over their head or maybe like a force field or something. But actually, there's enough heads, spare heads that you can swap out and just use one of these instead of the, the guy yelling. And, you know, maybe I would because I wouldn't have to glue it in there. I'm kind of interested in that, but I still wanted to do the, the face. And let's see what else. The um, you can swap weapons too. So there is one alternate weapon in this set. So you've got this pointing hand. So I figured that'd be like the commander. And of course I didn't perfectly line it up. But that's right. Um, but he would also have. Uh, so he's got a pointing hand. This sword is actually in a holster, so it's like he put his sword in his holster and he's just beckoning. And then he would have his gun hand. But like, which one would you give it? Would you give him the plasma? I think that one's intended for the, it's like the heavy weapons guy is the commander. In Space Crusade, it's the opposite, usually. But I could give him the, the gun with the honor badge, because usually it's the commander that carries the honor badges. So if you give him this one, and you give him this head, here, maybe it would work, but actually I think the way it's set up, you, it might not work that way. But maybe this particular guy gets him. So you could say a different guy is the commander. Anyway, so there's the underside of it, what it looks like. And I didn't care if these weren't fully painted because you're not going to see that. But this is uh, almost completely dry, and then I may actually just start piecing this together. I mean, it's I think it's close enough to what I want that I'm probably not going to do much more to it, except I might do little dots for the eyes on the helmets. And, you know, you, you barely see them in a game anyway. I mean, for the table, this is just about right. Would I color these holsters? I'm not sure what I would color them. 
be a dark orange or something. Not some not dark brown or black. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just doing a craft painting stream today, Ribby. And uh Disco Biscuit UK and O1 Yellow. So on the the red one, which I'm planning to be the uh, Blood Angels. So there's our screaming baby guy there. Let me turn this light off. Focus. So I gave him a, a lighter skin tone. He got some gluing ahead of you. I'm not going to glue these. That's the thing. I'm not going to glue them. Unless I have to. I mean, if I break a piece off and I need to glue it, okay, fine. But these are push fit. I have yet to try to assemble one of these Marines yet, though. The, uh, I mean, I was really fiddling around a lot with these, these Necrons. And I almost was like, I need to just glue this because it's so annoying. But it fit together. I can show you a few examples here in a minute. So yeah, I'm just following kind of the same pattern with the honor badges. Now, some people don't color the, they don't put any edging around these uh, pod lawns at all. Other people put like uh, gold or silver or gray. So I don't know, for the moment, I'm just gonna kind of leave them the way they are. If they look too plain, I might add gold or silver, I'm not sure. Here's uh, the chrome pen. Work. So I really like how that turned out. Wow, that looks great on camera. Of course, all the light is hitting it and everything. So I was trying to paint as much stuff on the sprue as I could. And then having to like rotate the figure around and do all this stuff. But I mean, if I if I line these, like I I don't know. I'm not the world's greatest painter. But I'm having fun, and that's what it's all about. So there we got the black gun. I don't know if I'm going to leave that red. I was experimenting with my metallics. Again, that's what the red metallic looks like. I don't know, it almost looks like pink. So imagine like a pink blade. I don't know, maybe I'll just leave it red. I mean, this, this paint is so shiny, it catches the light in different ways. It's like, why do you need to make fake highlights? shadows because you've already got them. I mean, I guess it could just look like a big red blob. I don't know. If I'm happy with it, that's kind of all that really matters. Yeah, I really like the way this paint turned out. Maybe just, you know, they talk about watching paint dry. <laughs> that's bad. So yeah, so I'll have to touch that up. I do have some gloss red. This is nowhere near as glossy as what's there, but if I have to touch it up with little spots, I might use that. I have some darker red. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Fixing that up, and there you can see the, the plasma gun. Now I could have made that shiny metallic. I think if I had some metallic red that wasn't so like pinkish, it would be good for this like robot arm here. red. I like it. Alright, and then the Ultramarines, the overrated Ultramarines, people always talk about. So there's that gold pen again for the little crest on the front. And yeah, you can, when I zoom in like this, you can see that like I, I went over. I didn't stand inside the lines, but you won't see that at the table. Now, I see they have these little shields here. I guess that's supposed to be individual heraldry, but they don't all have it, or they don't have it in the same spot. So I'm questioning, like, what I even need to do that? Like, if I start doing this, is it going to be like, well, each guy should have his own shield? Like, this guy has one on his leg. Oh, this guy's got one on his hip. Well, 
I guess that's for the individual unit. But the way I've seen that some people do it is one of the pod lawns will be like the symbol of the, the chapter faction. So like they have the upside down Omega symbol. And I actually do have some water decals. I've never used them before. And I could easily use them. Yeah, put put it on one side and then on the other side they put like the division or the army or whatever. I'm probably not gonna do that. I probably just do it the symbol on that side and then I wanna use one of the German inspired monikers for this side, but am I really gonna be able to like do tiny lettering on there? I'm not sure. My hand's that steady. That's why I got these markers. I was hoping that maybe I could like practice writing out little just simple things. The idea would be like they've got metal armor and they like painted it on themselves. Like soldiers painting on their helmets. But anyway, there's that there's that gold. And you can see I missed a couple spots. I'll probably have to touch that up once I get it out of the sprues. The chain swords, I haven't done anything yet. I was experimenting with that metallic blue. I thought, well, I could make the swords that blue color. Then they'd be like this like kind of pastel blue. So I don't know. The black guns. I say black and blue don't go together, but consult your color wheel. So there's the screaming baby. As I was uh, working on this one, it actually popped out of the sprue, but I didn't want to lose it, so I just got some sticky tack, aka poster tack, whatever, and just stuck it back on there. But yeah, they can't stay on the sprues forever. They're going to go on the game table. So these guys are probably the ones that it's most tempting to add more detail to because it's just, they're so dark looking. It's just going to be a big blue blob on the table, potentially. But they look so good. I mean, the, the light makes it look much more vibrant blue than it actually is. But I guess that's part of the illusion of the camera, right? Hey, Major Reasonable, welcome. So, doing a little craft uh, stream here. I also want to show you some of the other things I've been working on. Yeah, if only I had like a spray area. So I've got this uh, Krylon Fusion all-in-one matte glacier gray. So I'm gonna spray everything gray. No, I'm kidding. I'm not really gonna do that. Um, no, this was a color that I used on some. So when they were having their board game sale. I was grabbing all these cheap board game stuff to use for Hero Quest, Space Crusade, whatever. It's half off. So I found these guys. This is a Battletech, not Robotech, Battletech. And I thought, oh, I could use these guys as like dreadnoughts. So they were like a really dark gray that just kind of looked like a blob on camera. So I sprayed them. And yeah, it's like, okay, so you sprayed them primer color. But actually, this this color is almost exa an exact match of the Dreadnought from Space Crusade. So I was like, oh, perfect. And I left the base black. I don't know, I just thought it'd be fine. But actually, if you look at these closely, Space Crusade, unlike HeroQuest... See, in HeroQuest, you pretty much just use your imagination. It doesn't matter what, what the character looks like, what weapon he's got in his hand. You just you just say what, it, what it's supposed to be. Oh, yeah, he's got a, a triple crossbow, and he's got, like, plate armor... And it just looks like a guy with, you know, his fists out or something. Whereas in Space Crusade, it's like what you're holding is what you have, usually. So I thought, well, okay, so this guy's got two missile launchers. He's got fists. So maybe this would be a different, a weaker Dreadnought that just has a rocket launcher. I think you could say. Or like this one. Maybe these are assault cannons. And what that's up top. That is, I don't know if that's supposed to be his head or... It could be just whatever you want. I don't know, maybe he has a plasma gun up there too. And so that would be his three weapons. But maybe this guy would only have like two life points and this guy would have three. Of course you can't break the parts off. They don't move, they don't twist, nothing. Whereas the uh, the actual Space Crusade Dreadnought, you could like pop the pieces off as he's getting like damaged and stuff. Just like the debris laying around. And there's this one. So you could say those are two uh, assault cannons. But maybe he doesn't have any other weapons, just the bolters. 
So like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, maybe. Twin missile launchers, one, two, three. There's this one. Yeah, I guess that'd be twin missile launchers. And what are those guns? Are those bolters? <laughs> those assault cannons again? Uh, I guess you could just say what you could say they're flamethrowers, I guess. I think this one, yeah, I tried to pull him off the base because I thought, oh, maybe I could just like yank him off the base. But the peg just like broke. I thought, eh, not good. So it's it's like fused in there. It's like plastic glued in there. Or it's so tight you just can't break it out. And there's this little guy. This guy just looks like he hardly has anything. But these guys actually have stack cards, so I might consult those to see what what the, the game designers intended these guys to have. Because these are just extras, like you buy the main set, the expansions, and then this, these are just some extras. But I just wanted to use the miniatures. I thought, okay, these could be like extra like specialty dreadnoughts. And then you've got your Space Marines, you've got your Necrons, aka the Androids. And then what what else? Well, I've already got the Orcs, and actually the Orcs are a fa faction and fire team, so I mean, I've got those already. So whether I wanted to play fire team or just wanted to use these as proxies for Space Crusade that I've decorated myself without painting up my vintage pieces, you know, it's going to work. So I really tried to find this um, Aliens, another glorious day in the core, Gale Force 9, and I just couldn't find it anywhere. You could buy it online, but it was super expensive. So apparently it was one of those games that was there and gone. People just bought it up. I thought, oh, that's no good. So I was always looking for like a Xenomorph, like Aliens, Aliens figures, so I got this. I ordered it online, got the best deal I could, so 12 uh, hard plastic miniatures. And yeah, they're on sprues, I'll show you. It was tempting to leave them as black, but I thought they're just going to look like blobs on the camera. They're not going to look that good. Plus, I'm going for something out of Space Crusade. So look how, look how small and fragile looking they are. They're very like spindly. So these I'm a little concerned about when I construct them. I'm thinking, ah, I don't know if this is, this is going to be very good. But they look awesome. And you can see that their uh, base is, like their feet are like part of the base. So I'm not going to be using the regular game bases for them. But that's okay. Yeah, there's 12 of them. There's these little tiny little pieces. Obviously, this is not for kids to play with and break. But I'm concerned about how fragile these are. But my thought was, okay, in um, Space Crusade, you're actually fighting Gene Stealers, which are obviously a take on the Xenomorph alien. They've got four arms and they're kind of like the alien queen, but shrunk down. But anyway, in the computer game, they're called Soul Suckers, and they actually look much more like Xenomorphs than the original. I thought, oh, I know. I could make them purple. Well, maybe not purple. But this is what I wanted the iridescent spray paint for. I thought I could spray these down with the iridescent paint. I guess, I guess I'll have to paint these bases something else. Probably black again. And it'll be kind of a shimmery, shiny, uh, interesting kind of purplish green. Because in the, in the computer game, they have these bright color schemes for everything. And it's like actually purple with bright green um, shadowing. <laughs> like the, the, the shadows are like bright green. But I don't know, I think that would look cooler with the iridescent paint. You're supposed to have a black base coat first. So I'm not gonna work on these today. Well, I'm gonna be out of daylight probably by the time I get done with the stream, but these eventually will get worked on. What else have I got going here? Okay, see so these are the bases. For the fire team and oh yeah this was something that I was just I'd heard about it and I finally read about it when I saw a PDF of the Warhammer 40,000 1987 the Rogue Trader so the first edition I think it was a reprint of the first edition so it wasn't the first first edition but pretty close anyway they said use a deodorant stick as a hover tank I was like oh sweet so I have this uh, deodorant stick that I saved instead of throwing it away. 
And it, it's funny because I'll be doing my shopping and I'll look for like, you know, personal care products and I'll check to see the shape. Is it a cool looking shape? So I thought, okay, you just lay that down, spray paint it. I removed the labels and everything. And you can like glue bits on there. <laughs> uh, this is going to be for Space Crusade. Yeah, I'm just getting caught up with the chat. Sorry. Yeah, it's going to be for Space Crusade. It's a game I already own. I got a great deal on it from a really cool guy on Board Game Geek. So I don't need the game. But the thing is, I want to paint the stuff. I want to learn how to paint. But I don't want to use my vintage pieces to paint. Like, I just feel like keeping those pristine, more or less. I'm still going to play with them, and I have. But just using, like, other stuff just for the game, and I figure it's pretty close. These, these Space Marines are, like, a head taller than the the ones from 1990. So it's not a perfect match. And they were kind of like a purple color, so I made it blue. Yeah. Yeah, I know, painting is its own hobby. But... Okay, so are you going to play with these again? Yeah, it's Space Machine. I make models like this all the time. I don't normally even use clips anymore, only for the larger screw part anymore. I just use my Exacto blade and which my blade. Well, see, I, I started trying to cut some of these out using my Exacto knife, but I was having to like saw through them because these are really thick, these little bits. So I wasn't wanting to like break them or like cut myself, so I just I didn't do it. So I was using scissors and then I was using clippers. Yeah, see, I, I'm taking as many shortcuts with the painting as I can. Um, and, and like using as cheap materials as I can because I don't want to spend a lot of time painting it. I mean, it is fun, but I also want to play the game more than I want to just sit and paint and admire it. Yeah, and I can understand that. I mean, I'm sure there's people that buy the stuff just to paint it, just to show it off. But I'm not going for the heavy metal look where it's got the exaggerated highlights and shadows and like the cartoony colors and all that, even though I think that looks really great when it's all done. I mean, if you compare like the Warhammer or the Citadel Games Workshop stuff from like 1990, like on the box covers, it doesn't look that fancy compared to like nowadays. But then you look at the stuff nowadays and it's like, oh my goodness, you know, this professional paint job with, you know, airbrushes and washes and contrasts and all this fancy stuff. Like, no, I'm not going to be buying like thousands of these. I, I foolishly bought a lot of these privateer press paints originally, and I was using them just for stupid stuff. I was like, why did I do that? I should have just bought this stuff. This is so much cheaper. You get so much. You get this for the cost of like that. So you get way more paint. And I don't care if it's not like perfectly, you know, watery and whatever. I know you're supposed to mix it with water and everything, but anyway. So the spray painting did most of the work for me screws and it's mostly just the detail with like these pens stuff like that and then I use this for varnish DuraClear Deco Art this is Americana once again satin varnish it's just satin it's it's like this creamy gross stuff but when it dries it looks pretty glossy and I mean if you if you slop it on thick it looks really glossy and you can put it on lighter or whatever. And yes, I mixed gloss and, and matte paint together to get satin finish. But I think it looks, it's like just the right amount of shiny to me to look good for what I want it for. I guess this is a bad example because these are the ones that were originally spray painted. Okay, let's get one that was never spray painted black. Now it was, the undercoat was dark red, but still you can see it's pretty shiny. And that's just one layer of this stuff. And it, it feels smooth. So yeah. Oh, 
Okay, Major Asnable, um, you're asking what kind of paint? Um, I've been talking about a lot of different paints, so maybe be more specific. Which which one are you talking about? Are you asking about? So each of these sprues is spray painted originally. So this is Rust-Oleum Deep Blue, for the Ultramarines, uh, Colonial Red for the Blood Angels, and Ginger Yellow Ultra Gloss for the Imperial Fist Pop Top Blue Container. This stuff. This is the this is what the ultramarines are painted with. Or are you talking about this stuff? Oh, diamond on top. Yeah. So this is um, Americana folk art. I know with the light it's weird. Americana folk art metallic. It's blue sapphire is actually what it's called. Blue sapphire. And uh, it's water-based acrylic. So if you go to some big box retail stores like Walmart, for example, they have a, a small hobby section and they'll have like your regular acrylics like this. And, you know, you'll have your basic colors, the big ones. And then they'll have like the glow in the dark ones. They'll have like these. They'll have the fluorescent ones. It's like the blue light reactive ones what it is yeah um, and if you want to see what that that blue looks like on camera anyway it looks like this you can see it's kind of shiny yeah this this does not look this is like 10 times more blue than it actually is so I think this camera just exaggerates the color based on the lighting but it's still a good camera. I really like it. I only wish that I could manipulate it in any direction instead of just straight up and down. But for the price I paid, it was it was super awesome. And the guy that sold this to me is super awesome too. So thanks to him, he knows who he is. But now the other blue that I used, this was for the ogres. This matte ink blue spray paint. So I, I used this because I thought, oh, this looks more like the Mage of the Mirror ogres, as I imagine them to be brand new with the, the dark, dark blue. Is it possible for me to upload a link to my Discord straight to some of my pictures that I painted? So Major Asnable, if you go to the Discord, or yeah, you can post links in the chat, I don't mind. I was going to say, you can upload images to Discord, to our Discord, HeroQuest Fans Discord, if you want. That's the link at the bottom of your screen. That's fine. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. <laughs> Shout out to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio for the cool music that we're hearing. This is basically the uh, sci fi horror synthwave uh, playlist that I've got going, which is what I use for when we play Hero, uh, not Hero Quest, when we play uh, Space Crusade. When we play Hero Quest, I use more like medieval um, royalty-free music. Alexander Nakarada and all that. Yeah, you certainly can. Yeah, we've got a painting channel. We've actually added lots more sub-channels, whatever you want to call them. Those little hashtag things to our Discord, so... It's grown by leaps and bounds. We're trying to keep things more organized. I know I get off topic a lot. But anyway, let's try out one of these Gundam uh, paint markers. So yeah, see, I could be a totally fake painter because you haven't actually seen me paint anything. You've just seen me talk about it. So somebody else could have done this. But yeah, it's like if you're paying somebody to do this for you, you're getting ripped off. I know, I'm a complete, complete noob, but that's right. I'm having fun. Okay, so you got to shake these up. And then it's got a little chisel tip on it, which is pretty, it's like plastic. 
So I guess that's that's a good thing because I was thinking if it's just like fiber or something, it might like you know too much pressure, it just kind of breaks. But these are for supposedly for plastic models, so you're always supposed to do this thing where you you press it down, get the flow started. Okay, see the white getting on there. Once I, uh, I shook one of these up and like just paint went everywhere, so I'm trying not to do that again. Not one of these Gundam ones, but one of these older pens. One of these cheaper gold pens. Yeah, this chisel tip is maybe too big for what I was wanting to do. I want to get some decals, but I don't want to spend a bunch of money on them. I've seen that you can actually buy sheets, uh, it's like a sheet of plastic, basically, and you can print it in an inkjet printer. And you can't do white unless you use white plastic. Um, it, everything's like, you know, like an outline, whatever. Of course I thought, well, you could just paint white underneath it and then put the decal over the top. But if you really wanted really tiny, fine, fine print, Yeah, you can post it in the Discord if you want. I may not get to it until after the stream, but sure. Okay, well, let's test out a little something here. I just wanna, before I ruin it, because I don't wanna have to repaint all this stuff. Oh, it's really tiny. Oh, interesting, it's almost like chalk. This is not for drawing, this is for like filling in areas. And there's a website that prints off decal dirt cheap. I can't remember if I do find it again because I think I may have copied it, pasted it somewhere. I'll upload to Discord. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking for a cheap solution because, yes, I could just look on eBay until I find the one I want or look on Etsy where somebody else is selling me their like custom work, but it's going to be like more expensive than I want to pay. I want like the cheapest thing possible that's just going to do the job. It doesn't even have to stick very well. I can just put a clear coat over the top but what I'd like to do is just do some really really small lettering or some really really small like clip art type designs so again I was looking at the uh, the German version of Space Crusade and they have the whole GSG thing like instead of um, it's GSG 19 instead of the ultramarines and it's uh, GSG musketeer instead of the imperial fists and then it's um, GSG Tiger instead of the Blood Angels. They say that you can rub this stuff off. Yep. You sure can. Look at that. Just rub it right off. Now that stuff has dried already. Yeah, I, there's other paint pens, like Bic paint pens, I think, and they just, they, they're just crap. They're like oily. They're really meant for paper, and they just rub off no matter what you do. But this, I mean, this is there. But yeah, it's going to be like kind of a one-shot thing. I'm not sure if this is the best solution. Well, okay, so, I mean, they're cool pens, but yeah, I just spent 20 bucks on this, just to find out it wasn't what I needed. If the, the point was finer, it might work. 
these are supposed to be for like people that don't know how to paint and just want to like fill or just fill in little areas on toys. Look, okay. It's like how tiny can you make it? You have to press pretty firmly. Probably try to go the decal route at this point. It's almost got kind of a watercolor feel to it. But I like how you can just kind of rub it off really quick. So if you make a mistake, you can just like clean it with a wet paper towel. Yeah, I've heard of water slide decals, but I think. If you search that on Etsy, you get like tons of results. So I don't think it's necessarily one thing. It's just something people will talk about. So I don't know. The world of decals is new to me. I remember there was like model airplanes and stuff from the past where you just peel off the decal and stick it on or you dip it in water. Well, the other paint pens, let's see. We've got it's basic. So we've got kind of a metallic. All these have to be activated first. There's yellow, red, blue. I mean, maybe I could use these to touch up the spots. I doubt the, the color is going to match, though. These are probably like really bright, brilliant colors. What's this thing? Oh, it's black. OK. Well, anyway, another tool in the arsenal. I've got plenty of toys that have like little nicks and dings in the paint. I mean, you could use it to touch them up. Yeah, thanks for that, There's Major Asnable. Maddie and Son, welcome. So yeah, we're just talking uh, crafting and my Space Crusade projects, I'm working on using these fire team stuff. I don't know, I might, uh, it might be time to start assembling, but first, before I do that, I'm going to see if I can touch up, do a little bit of painting on my paint stream. How about that? So we got our cheap brushes, and yeah, this is China. Plaid. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of like folk art brushes. I mean, you can buy these, like a whole pack of them for five bucks, whatever. So. The beat up brushes, I really abused these early brushes that I got. This is just for slopping on gloss uh, varnish or whatever. Cheers, Dead Gamer. Don't drink your paint water. It's a good, important uh, tip. Okay, so I'm probably just going to use bright red. Maybe I'm going to use some of this, this deep red for like the inside of the mouths of these characters. So I usually just take like the lid off. That's just how I do it. I've got a little paint thing right there. I know you should use a wet palette and all this stuff, but I don't really have that right now. I've, I have done that with uh, wet paper towels and a little Tupperware type lid. Okay. I'll take off my spectacles. Okay, so I got this little guy here. Tongue in his mouth. So we've got our little point on there. Some people put the brushes in their mouth. I'm not going to do that. I figure if you really want to put spit on your brush, just spit on your fingers and put it in there. So we've got our red paint. And again, this is the uh, gloss red. Let's see if we can get in there, actually. Some 
water in there first. thought that you could use a toothpick and it'd be easier, but the toothpick doesn't hold it quite as well as you think. Let's cut that off. I don't want it to look like he's spitting blood, I just want it like his tongue is hanging out. Of course it's like he's like ah. Spot. The other stuff. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I know. I could get the magnifying glass, and I could get like one of those brushes that's like one single hair. Try to try to get it on there. Technically, would advise against licking brushes, especially if it's oil. Yeah, even if it's acrylic. I mean, do you really want that in your body? It's plastic. I mean, yeah, you got lots of microplastics in your body anyway, but yeah, definitely not food grade. It may not be toxic, but especially if you do a lot of painting, it's like, ugh. yeah, you you can't really even tell. You're not even gonna see that on screen, but it just makes his face look a little bit more interesting rather than just being just one solid color. I want to give him teeth. Some really white teeth. Yeah, I enjoy doing the rant cast. I think we'll probably do the rant cast next week. Because that's how we did it originally. We do it every other week. It's just too it's too much with our schedules, Strange Bus and I, to like do it every single week. And yeah, I know I've talked about it being a call-in show, and that's kind of what it could be. One suggestion from Jacer was, why don't you just do a fan stream? Why does it have to be a rant cast? And I don't want to do, like, extra streams. I think we've already got plenty. Like, three streams a week is a lot for me. I'm just doing it as a hobby, you know, get a full-time job and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's like... Now he's going to look like he's got a mouthpiece in the boxer. Uh, kind of over the top. I should have painted his mouth first. You know what? I'm just going to do that. I'll paint his mouth. I'll make it look silly. He'll look like a clown. And then I can just repaint his skin tone over the top. Live and learn. Like when I was a kid, there were those toy dinosaurs. It's got giant red lips. There were those toy dinosaurs that you get at like the grocery store, and it'd just be like, for the eyes, it'd just be like dot dot, and then the teeth, you know, a big splash of white, and then you know whatever. They didn't really worry about it, and so that to me was a painted toy. I mean, yeah, they'd probably take an airbrush and just spray like a once over for like the back. Yeah, don't uh, don't put the brushes in your mouth. That's what uh, it, uh, Van Gogh did. Van Gogh, is okay. They just, just spit on your fingers or, or 
spin on the brush, or just spin on the table, and just, I mean, it's gross, but yeah, if you really just want to get saliva on the brush, you put it directly in your mouth. have some burnt oh this is coffee bean this is really dark stuff I don't know if I want it that dark but I can try it I can always just layer the skin on if I need to yeah this stuff such that I feel like I'm my own way here. Way too much pain. When you're cleaning your brushes, like you do it gently rather than just yanking it, pulling the little hairs out. First I thought he had a mohawk haircut, which I guess you could do if you wanted to paint it that way, but it's like he has like a half helmet on, because it kind of like fades into the back of his neck, of his armor. So he's got this variant of the helmet the other guys are wearing. head forward just a little bit here some more it doesn't just look like he's wearing like a makeup on his face I can see the seams but I don't really care about the seams 
mold lines. People get really upset about mold lines. I mean, if you're a professional painter who's doing it for the mantelpiece for like a fancy close-up, I suppose. But we know it's a toy. We know it's fake. It's a big deal. I guess I could put paint hair underneath. Originally, I was going to give him black hair. But just uh, figured, okay, he's just bald and he's got the helmet. There's like a like a headset. In there. His face is like a mask of anger. I'm so used to painting miniatures where all I'm doing is just, just giving them one color and then a varnish and then I'm done. Because I would buy like proxy miniatures, like get Reaper Bones or whatever, and I'm I'm just trying to recreate some Hero Quest thing, so I just give it all one color, call it good. You know, like like the original Hero Quest pieces were like green or blue or red or whatever. chat here. People who lick their paint brushes while there's paint on the brush are, are ignorant. Nonetheless, most people lick their brush after they've already, already rinsed it. Yeah, it's all that delicious lead. Don't do it, folks. That being said, the only reason to lick a brush is to straighten it. Though I've seen many people stick a paintbrush in their mouth and leave it there. Yeah, like they're, they've just got an oral fixation. They're just like chewing on a toothbrush or a cigar or something. I'm an artist. I've been down the road of paint, sketching, carving, sculpting that for my entire life. Well, that's cool, man. I just got into this hobby like last year, and I've seen some interesting and odd behaviors. But all together, I've seen a really wonderfully talented artist. But you wanted to paint them. <laughs> yes. Well, I do want to paint them. It's just that, to me, the painting is a means to an end. But it's not such a means to an end that I would like hire somebody to do it for me or I would buy something that was already painted. I mean, if I have bought things that are already painted, but my tendency is to want to say, yeah, I'm just going to paint over this with my thing. So I guess I, I want the experience of painting, but not necessarily like I don't have the drive to become like a professional art quality artist as far as paint goes. I mean, I, I have studied the arts, but I mean, miniature painting was not part of it. I mean, I would just do like a, he still just looks like he's got a weird thing going on with his mouth. I guess from down here, it doesn't look so bad. From up here, it looks a little bit over the top. Yeah, so I guess I'm just a dabbler as far as I'm just painting. But I mean, the, the the playing of the game is what I would do. And yeah, it, it is a little more personal because it's like, oh yeah, I've created, I've created this little thing. But I'm just talking about the Hero Quest stuff previously. That's what I would do. Previously, I would just paint one color and just be satisfied with that. Whereas with this, I'm just trying to have more of the painting experience. I guess it's kind of like so many other hobbies. I mean, let's say you like dollhouses. You can just buy a dollhouse, right? Or you could buy an unpainted dollhouse and paint it yourself. You can buy all the uh, furniture and dolls and stuff and just throw them inside it. Or you could like make each one of those things by hand. You know, there's just so many different levels of involvement you can put yourself into. So if you want to go that extra mile, you can. But 
you can just at any point just stop and say, you know what, that's that's as far as I'm willing to go. That's as much fun for me. It's good. Of course, I know there's also people that have painting parties and they'll get together and say, yeah, okay, you paint, I'll use this color. And then the next guy will do the next step, on and on. Or just give everybody a miniature and just start working and see how far you get. I think that looks better. More like a human being, it looks like a clown. Just a clown. Which clowns are human beings too. They're like evil robot clowns from outer space. I can clean up my table too. I dripped some paint. Still kind of looks like he's got a mouthpiece boxer. I haven't been watching the camera, so you may have been not getting the best view of this detail here, but let's just take a closer look. Focus. As if saying focus like makes it happen. The director or something. I don't know. From here, it looks fine. Okay. All right, I'll repeat the process on the other guys. Yeah, in the uh, if you check out the Space Crusade computer game, which Gremlin did from 19 I think it was 1991. The version I have is 95, but I mean just I think just like the Hero Quest computer game that gremlin did for like dos and stuff they just like first they released it on floppy disk and then they re-released it on cd-rom but it's like the same exact game like nothing's nothing's changed it's just thrown onto a cd so it's not like you're getting extra content or better quality like some games like warcraft they gave you like more graphics there was like more animation and music and stuff not so with that game Okay, so there he is, screaming baby. You can barely see anything. I mean, you can see you can see it a little easier with the lighter color skin. Yeah, in the computer game, uh, so the Imperial Fist guy had brown skin, black hair. I think he had dreadlocks actually. And the um, Ultramarines guy had pale skin, I think he had like a, a robot eye or something, and he had like white hair. Not even gray, just like white hair. And then the uh, Blood Angels guy um, had kind of like fair complexion, and he had like blonde. Like, But since it was, uh, you know, comic book style, it was like yellow like yellow hair, straw colored hair. It was kind of red. We'll just do the, the red mouth again. Give it, we'll give him the clown look. We'll cover it over. So we're going again for the gloss red. Yeah. Space Crusade. Yep, it's also was known as Star Quest in several countries in Europe. He's got some kind of like divot coming out of his head. I can't tell if that's supposed to be like something bionic or is it just like a zit or something. Or beauty mark. Yeah, once again, it looked like he was bludgeoned in the mouth. He looked like a zombie. Okay. I don't know, are his eyebrows shaved or if he just has a thick brow? He 
kind of looks cool. I mean, the, these guys, these are like future soldiers, space soldiers. They're they could be they could have any fashion sense you want them to have, I guess. His eyes are so small. Of course, it's like his eyes are squinted shut. Almost, it's like ah. So it's really hard to get like the pupils. I mean, I'm sure there's people that can do it, but I'm just not that good yet. So let's see, what color did I use for his skin tone? I think I gave him this stuff. AC Flesh. And so this is Delta Creative Acrylic. So I'm just going to splash that on to make him look a little bit less clownish. Like how they design these sprues. I mean, it's almost like there's a, they they use all the space, but then there's like enough space for you to almost get in there and just paint it. Or if you're gonna spray paint it, you can just like set it up and not have it or have it so that it can actually dry. Vader with his helmet off. Hey, you could do these guys in black. They could all be Darth Vader. Obviously, the Space Marines take many inspirations, not just from Starship Troopers, but also Star Wars, of course, Medieval Knights, and Samurai, Stormtroopers, all like that. If it was a bigger model, I guess you could give him like paint individual teeth or something. Or, like metallic teeth or something. Yeah, I never thought I would own Space Crusade, but Board Game Geek is a good place to find stuff, not a paid promotion. I'm just telling you. You know, because you're a fan and you want to sell your stuff, you're not going to charge them through the nose, usually. You know, it's to a good home. As opposed to eBay, where they'll just charge whatever they want. Okay. The top of his mouth. It looks like his teeth have been knocked out. not do too much more with that one. I feel like it's just right. At that distance, no one will know. Let's set these guys aside here. And go to the red guys. We've got our screaming baby here. Again. Same face. And for this one, I used this. Uh, gee, you can barely tell. Light mocha. I guess it's it's the contrast with the background color that matters the most. So for him, let's give him the, the clown mouth first. Tiny trailing bit of brush on there. I should probably like snip that off with the scissors because that's going to screw up everything. Just like a single thread. Oh, I got it. Okay. Let's try this here. Yeah, I 
again. He looks like a, a zombie who just took a bite out of somebody. Thank everybody who supported us. It's not easy streaming. I mean, some people have an advantage. They got lots of money or good looks or already an established fan base. They can kind of do whatever they want. They don't have to try very hard. But if you're just doing it for fun. In your spare time, a little different. Dare not do more with that one. Now if it did like a thousand more of these, I would be a pro. Get a little closer view with that. can't really tell. I guess I've got too many lights going. But anyway, it, it looks much better than it did. <laughs> Support es muy bueno. Yeah. Not much, not much Spanish, but... Speaking of languages, so there was an update to the HeroQuest Companion app today, and I thought, oh boy, it's the Mage of the Mirror, finally. But <laughs> it, somebody posted, well, first I looked, and it's like, okay, it's not there, so nothing has changed, darn. Uh, 1.62, and it said added polish. Somebody wrote added polish, so it's like, oh, so they added polish to the core game? I mean, that's nice, but like, what kind of polish? Like. <laughs> They polished it up, but then somebody said, no, 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 it's the Polish language. Polish. Like, oh. <laughs> so, so now our Polish friends can play uh, the HeroQuest Companion app. Of course, I, it makes me wonder, like, I, I kind of like that when you can switch switch uh, languages and hear the, like, the different voices. Because sometimes they have different voice actors, so I don't know if it sounds like a guy doing an impression of Mark Hamill doing an impression of the Joker or what. But yeah, the Zargon voice is very silly. The companion app. Of course, you can turn it off. You don't have to hear it. <laughs> the mummy has died. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> that's that's what you were going for. Of course, I guess they definitely wanted a contrast between like the mentor voice and the Zargon voice. Because they're not the same guy. I was realizing there's more I could do with this auric. Maybe I'll do some more of that instead of trying to assemble stuff. What happened to my music? Oh, I paused it. Again. I thought I'd fix that. Okay. I could just paint more details on this stuff all night, really. But I think I'll just paint like just a few more details, and maybe I'll start trying to assemble. If I could assemble at least one of them for you. Good show, don't you? Let's get some more of that work. Even when you close these things perfectly, you strip all the paint away, it still dries out in a couple of years. So, make sure you use it. Different people have told me different things. Like, one person said, oh, you should mix water in there. Another person said, nope, don't ever do that. Use uh, gel medium um, to try to, like, spread it out. Just putting a little extra detail on there. 
Mostly I just want to color these like little crests and things that they have. See that was on the arm. Going I think I painted that one already. You can barely see it, but I just figure it gives you a little bit more visual appeal. Oh, he's got a badge on his back. There's that honor badge right there. That's why. I thought it was like a cable or something. I wasn't looking that close. Oh, and there's another one. Like, find, find the honor badge. So I'll be painting those up. So you could have like one guy that's just covered in them. Yeah, I'll probably just add those details in here. I'm not too concerned. Okay, there's one that can paint. I mean, I could be painting these red because they've got the, the skull and everything on them to match the uh, chest crests. But I don't mind it too much. Okay, so I painted that. Of course, now on the other side, I haven't painted the sword. Probably should at least paint. Of course, maybe these are the type of swords that are not that color on both sides. Okay, I just flipped this thing over on its side and it didn't spill out. So either that paint is that thick or that was a good design. So congrats to Games Workshop on that. Yeah, am I that guy that would have the uh, the vehicle in my lawn with the just primer color? And why is that? It's like you ran out of motivation to finish it, or ran out of money. Where'd you get these models? Oh, so there's a uh, Barnes and Noble bookseller. They also sell like board game stuff. They have a whole like board game section if you live in a major city. It's not just books and like videos and records and stuff. They actually sell like board games. And so actually let's color that. They had a uh, right after Christmas. So they had of course for Christmas they had all kinds of board games and stuff. It was like, oh cool. I was looking at the stuff and it's like, ah, eh, too expensive. 50 bucks for five Space Marines. Seems like I'm just being a fanboy and I, I don't need to buy that. Of course, now that that's like kind of the same price you would pay like at a regular Warhammer store, like 50 bucks for a package of five Space Marines. That's what you would get. You'd just get them on the sprues. You'd have to glue them. You'd have to paint them and all that stuff. But with this... Uh, it was a game called Fire Team, Warhammer Fire Team. And so you got these guys and you got the Necrons. So like 10 of those. And then you also got like the board, which is a really simple like hex board and then a, just a bunch of tiles and stuff. And you've got a bunch of cards, really plain looking cards. But still, it was like a bunch more stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, so this is a pretty good deal. Then they had the half off sale after Christmas. And so when I came back, because I was just browsing, I was like, oh, so this is 25 bucks. Not bad. And so I got it and I opened it up and you know, because I was thinking, well, I could be making a big mistake here, you know, impulse buy and everything. But I did more research, I looked through it and I thought, yeah, I think this is what I'm gonna do. So I think I even went to another location and I picked up like two more copies. So I had enough to do my Space Crusade project is just the metallic red. You're not really going to see this, but just in case you get a view of the shoulder. Let's see. Of course, now since this will take time to dry, I probably shouldn't try to assemble these. Yeah. Well, I was telling people on here. Of course, I know that not everybody, I mean, live far away, you may not have a Barnes & Noble in your area, 
But like first they did, I think they did hardcover books. They did a sale on those, and then they did a sale on board games. So that's that's how I got this. And then then right after that they did a sale on like puzzles. So it's like yeah. And I didn't want to be that guy who like bought the last copy. And I saw on eBay they were selling like Warhammer Fire Team, no miniatures included. So like I, don't know, I see what they're doing. Other people are doing the same thing. But I'm I'm gonna keep these because you can take like the the three boards and put them together and make a big hex map. It's like oh I could use that for Battle Masters maybe, like a mini Battle Masters. But I've got the full game, so it's kind of like well, why would I even do that? So they might go to waste. Or maybe I'll play some fire team sometime. Because, you know, I, I've played Hero Quest before. I know that if you don't like the rules of a board game, you can just change them. Just change them. I mean, why not? Life is short, right? Now, if you've got somebody who wants to play the game as written out of the box, like, okay that too of course I guess a person who already had a bunch of Warhammer 40,000 miniatures who is curious about fire team could buy for a reduced price one of those boxes and just get the uh, pieces or whatever or the tiles and things thing is it's it's kind of hard to keep this jar of paint open of course I guess it's designed that way so that you're not like drying it all out like super fast I'm just noticing some spots where it was oversprayed and I was just kind of touching it up it kind of looks he's kind of got like a Stallone expression I didn't realize all these years like Sylvester Stallone the actor like people might get fun of him you know uh, uh, you know with his lip to the side that was because of a, a birth defect so it's not him just being a weird actor like you can't help it so it's kind of crappy to make fun of him for having that but I mean everybody does nobody really thought about it too much Sylvester Stallone Well, with a lot of stuff, I mean, if you really want some trinket or game or whatever, you can just wait. You can just wait and wait and wait. And sooner or later, you'll come across just some unbelievable deal. And then if you still want it, go for it. Yeah, one man's trash is another man's treasure. That's it. Just how it goes. It was so cheap because nobody wanted it like hey if it's that cheap I'll get it for the miniatures I mean I, I used to kind of poke fun at people that would do that it's like oh yeah you're just buying it just for the miniatures like I want the game in the box to be good I don't want it to be junk but I mean if it's cheap enough you just like to paint miniatures or you want to use them as proxies for some other game or make your own game out of it sure why not Adding a little more character to these. And I painted all the crests. Do you want to see me paint a, an honor badge? There's nothing much to it. Just put these away. See, now that I see them, I can't unsee them. Now I feel like I have to finish them. So let's get our white gloss white. I actually have some ancient white, or antique white, that I'm going to use. But then I, I started using this, and I just 
stop. Well, okay, I can just go over it later if I don't like the color. Alright, so get some white, make sure not to knock it over. Because I have knocked these over, and these these bottles, these will spill. And it's not, not fun cleaning it up. Okay, so the honor badge, where was that honor badge? Here we are. Number 27. Easy. Just use the lid as a little. See, I'm used to doing this, uh, just taking the lid off and using that as my my little paint cup on these big acrylic tubes because I don't worry about it drying out. But these little bitty things, like, get paranoid about it drying out too fast. Like I had, I was once painting uh, some Star Wars figure and. The stuff was drying like as I was painting it. I was like, wow, what did I do wrong? I think I actually grabbed some airbrush paint on mistake. Something was wrong. I think, well, no, I think it was something you were supposed to dilute it. You're supposed to dilute it, and I was just slapping it on there. And I was like, why is it drying so fast? It was like super fast. It was like, hold on, hold on. This game needs another figure. Like, when you're in the middle of the game, you're like, let me just quickly paint it. And it's already dry by the time you set it down on the table. Like, okay. Yeah, so I made, made a lot of mistakes in my miniature painting career. Mostly I haven't, I haven't uh, done it the way you're supposed to. This is the closest I've come to like doing it the right, quote unquote, right way. So, yeah, nothing much to it there. Clean the brush, filthy water. Dab it off on the paper towel. Oh, why did I do that? I've got another honor badge to do. Well, it's probably good to clean your brush every so often because the paint starts to dry on it, and it starts to harden. Screw up the texture of the brush. I do have some brush cleaner. It's just in a little jar too. Where was that other one? It was on the leg. Okay, there it is. Right next door. And I mean, I could get in there and get really detailed with it. The yellow is interesting because it has kind of these drop shadows and things already. It looks really cool. Like I didn't have to really do anything. Whereas the blue, it's, I mean, it's so dark. I mean, it could add washes to add shadows, but you wouldn't even be able to see them, it's so dark. looking through my own eyes I'm seeing the miniatures on the table and they look awesome and then I'm looking at the camera and how they look on the camera and they look okay of course flaws that you can see with your eyes are hidden by the camera I mean these are 4k cameras but it doesn't matter it misses a lot of stuff Just because it's 4K doesn't mean it's you know, all that. Better cameras than I've had in a long time. Alright, so I got the bright red again. That's what I've been using for these, these little seals. talk about their hand shaking and everything so it's like you're bracing your hand against something to really get it on there now seals they usually kind of like spill over anyway I figure if you don't stay perfectly within the lines with these it's not not just such a big deal let's do this one here 
I should adopt like some type of Bob Ross like a persona. Yeah, happy little accidents. Yeah. That's it, my friend. Happy little accidents. That could be a whole shtick, like uh, Bob Ross, the miniature painter. Of course, he always had these like really big brushes and stuff, like house paint brushes, these big canvases, and that big palette that he had, and his, uh, his afro haircut, big poofy hair. Supposedly, a lot of people just listen to him because of his voice. His voice was really soothing relaxing so they might not have been trying to learn anything at all about painting just oh uh, yeah this guy lulled me to sleep tonight like all right cool and there's a whole big thing about i guess all his paintings and being in a warehouse somewhere and i guess his family not getting any money from the twitch stream and so that's unfortunate Okay, so those are the Imperial Fists, or uh, GSG Musketeer. Not sure what I'm going to do with those, those shields, to think about it. Because actually in the computer game, they gave all these guys names. Like, not just Robert Paulson, they all had names. But I mean, normally you don't differentiate them, it's just, yeah, yeah, the guy with that weapon, he, get, he moves, and then the next guy, and then the next guy. Commander is kind of the guy you only really care about. The rest of the guys are just cannon fodder. Only a pawn in their game. But let me show you. Hey! Welcome. Video game, theater, and music. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, so this is Strange Bus, everybody. Welcome to the stream. So I was just doing a, a painting and craft stream. So check this out. I'm not a miniature painter of any kind, but I bought this uh, Warhammer 40,000 fire team. It was like half off at Barnes and Noble, and I got like three of them. So they were all blue originally. I spray painted them. And so this is gonna be for Space Crusade, because I didn't want to paint my vintage figures. He's butchering Space Crusade. He sure is. He sure is. And loving it. So anyway, I've got these uh, worked on. And then I still got to glaze those things. And then I spray painted another one of them red. So there's your red faction there. Red faction, that's a game. Um, yeah. Hell, who are you calling a dope? No, just kidding. Um, and then I've got the ultramarine. So originally it was just a blue like sprue inside there. And I just, I spray painted it like an even deeper blue. And then I've just been using acrylics on these and then I've used like my little gold pen here and my um, chrome pen some of this you know some of these acrylics various paints and things so I got my cheap little brush but yeah, you can see the, the screaming baby faces of these uh, Space Marines. It was super hard to, to paint. All I was able to do is just do the inside of the mouth and the teeth. Like, I'm not good enough to do the eyes. Okay, focus. There we go. He's like, oh. Some of the Marines don't have helmets. Yeah, I do have a, an unboxing video to do. I promised you guys the HeroScape unboxing. I didn't promise it tonight, but it will happen. I might be playing some Xbox later tonight with a uh, family member. So I was trying out these uh, Gundam markers. Strange Bus, you, you seem like the kind of guy who would know what a Gundam marker is. But they were not quite up to what I was hoping for. These, apparently, are just for like, you have a toy and it's got a flaw in it, so you fix it. Like, 
by painting it white or whatever, or gray or blue, or you just don't know how to paint, and so you're just coloring. You're just coloring the figure, the plastic figure. But what I was hoping to do with it is I wanted to be able to like write like really tiny prints, like on the shoulder pads or something. But look at this. This is like the best I could do. I mean, the, the tips on the markers are just too too wide. So I think I'm probably just going to get some decals. I was going to do those decals too. So I was going to assemble these. I was going to put decals on them. I'll probably have to do a part two of this stream. Oh, thank you. And these are the these are the Necrons that it came with these uh, androids, these like Terminator-looking uh, dudes. Excuse me, this is just uh, kind of a silvery spray paint. This is left over from another project. I was looking for something really silver chrome. This is actually for glass, but it took really well to the plastic, so I lucked out there. And I did this one and some like metallic. This is from an automotive project that was left over. I spray painted those. And I tried to assemble them and I had a heck of a time because I wasn't following the directions. <laughs> Follow the directions. This is white. I was running out of white and then I sprayed some glow in the dark. Oh yeah, I gotta show you the glow in the dark effect. So I dropped my little black light. Let's turn some of these lights off here. black light out. Charge that up. Making magic. So yeah, that's glow in the dark Necrons. But then it's like, well, when would I ever use that? I'm not going to play the game in the dark. I mean, the board, probably not a good idea to expose it to too much UV light because this is UV. LED, um, but yeah, it's just kind of kind of cool for just for fun. Yeah, shout out to Carl Casey, White Bat Audio. Strange Bus is the one who turned me on to that guy's channel. We use his music for the uh, the Rantcast. Rantcast, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, man. You know it, rocking that white bad audio. This is like the sci-fi horror synth wave. Let's see, what's the specific track I'm listening to? It's all YouTube. Sci-fi synth wave mix Titan. Name of it. But yeah, I use that as the uh, the music for Space Crusade when we're playing. We've played a few games now. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do the uh, tear escape another time, or another time. But let me let me show you uh, the figures that I assembled already. These guys were a pain. It's like you feel like you're working with a, a handful of toothpicks, and they were like bending and stuff. So they're it's supposed to be push fit, so no glue required. But it's it's difficult. anyway there's like no details painted on this guy at all and actually when I did this I thought you know what I've just taken a plastic miniature and I've turned it into what looks like an unpainted metal miniature but I still think it looks awesome I think it looks cool there were also these guys these like scarab clusters or something they're supposed to be allies for the Necrons whatever just little guys like that so there were a bunch of these with like longer guns and shorter guns and there's a little bit of play with that I mean you can just you can pull the guy's head off you can pop the chest open pull out the arms the arms are connected to the weapon and so you could actually swap out like the long gun for the short gun 
but it would be a pain trying to do that in the game. You know, probably just like set up the ones you want and then just pull them out in this time. I also found these little clips. I bought a whole bunch of these from like a game supply store. And these actually work better for the uh, Space Crusade like boards. The clips that it comes with are just, they just don't hold very well. Maybe they did back in 1990, but they just don't anymore. And I got some 3D printed ones, which my brother-in-law 3D printed for me, and they work a little better. But these are almost the best. Because you can, if you're worried about it like stripping the, the cardboard off of the tiles, you just like kind of like pry it open and just like clip it on there. And it holds the walls together. So you can get these in clear. These happen to be black. Now it is kind of like up in the air. You hold them. Red cast. Yeah. Yep. I enjoy the rant cast, but it does take a lot out of me <laughs> when I do those. So, if you've ever done a stream, you know, full of passion and energy, you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's, uh, should I try assembling one on camera? Am I that crazy? So this is the this is the Warhammer Fire Team booklet. It's the rule book. It says right on there. I don't care about this game. I don't care about this game's rules. I mean, I did read it. It's like, well, it it seems like a lot of work. There's just a lot of like tiles and stuff. Because I thought, well, what's the point? You've got a little tiny board. You've just got my miniatures, your miniatures. What's the difference between just like you're playing craps? You're just rolling dice. Like, oh, and I. I and I got better and I, I beat you and I you know and you just keep doing that it's like well okay that's kind of fun but why do you even have all this other stuff but they had all these things like you add these wound tokens and these initiative tokens and all these other tokens I think you could just use this game like see that's what it is you could use these parts to just make your own game like that's what it looked like but look at those hexes I was thinking I just got hero escape I, instead of this goofy board, I could just use those plastic tiles that they've got for the terrain, and then it would be much more interesting, because all this stuff's supposed to be simulated terrain anyway. And you could play the same game using that, or you could use the HeroScape rules, because I think people have created their own rules for Space Marines and stuff, but even if they haven't, I can just make it up myself. So there's a couple of different things you could do. You could use the HeroScape plastic terrain for playing Warhammer, so, I don't mind that I have this, all this extra stuff. Okay, so that's what, that's what Games Workshop thinks they, sh they should look like. Oh, good. Yeah, see, they put all kinds of washes on theirs and highlights. And they've got little green effects on the, on the gun. And they put the, the fake grass and everything. I, I'm okay leaving the base, it's just black. Now, with this... Oh, I guess they gave him, like... It almost looked like they colored his hair in. And I thought, that's not hair, that's a helmet. It's a hair helmet. But that could be just, I don't know, like a, a cap or something. Like those guys in World War II tanks would wear look like like an old style football helmet it's just more to protect you from shrapnel so that's how they chose to interpret it see there they have those decals on the side I actually have some decals I can show you Oh yeah, these are, and as they always, they've done this for their entire career, uh, is, oh yeah, and if you like this, buy all these other miniatures. Buy all these other miniatures to make your game even even better. <laughs> but actually, these orcs look very similar to the orcs that I have from 2008. Except for that little bitty snotling guy with the, the potato masher grenade. But these... These look very similar to the orcs, and, and they're almost fully painted already. 
So if I really wanted to follow these rules, because the rules are in here, I could use this orc faction. But Hero Quest has opened my mind to the fact that any game can be anything you want it to be. Just use your imagination. And there's, if you want to know where to get started, there's rule sets out there that other people have come up with. You can tweak to your heart's desire. Okay, so that's how you would. So see those numbers there? If you're clipping them out of the sprues, make sure you pay careful attention to those. Especially with the Necron, because it's uh, very confusing. You've never done this before. So there's 28, 29, and head is 30. So it's like, it may look visually the same, but because of the number, it's just slightly different. And the pegs may not all fit together perfectly. And they don't even tell you the A and B thing. Like. I mean, I feel like I'm fairly sophisticated when it comes to this stuff, but I was very confused by this. So this is supposed to be like the beginner of beginner stuff, because uh, Kill Team is supposed to be a simplified 40k, Fire Team is supposed to be simplified Kill Team, and still, it's not up to the standard of like Space Crusade, which, you know, you can play it for a couple days and then you've got a handle on it. But yeah, look at this, look at those red eyes. I could paint it like that, just put little tiny dots of red for the eyes. Tiny greens for the Necron. And of course, lots of advertising. But, hey, I mean, uh, that's that's been their business model. They've made a lot of money doing it that way, and a lot of people don't like the way they do business. They're kind of litigious with their stuff, but to say it again, this is a fan stream, this is not an official thing, and I'm I'm not using their rules. I'm not painting it the way they told me to, I'm just painting it the way I want to. Yeah, there's some inspiration here and there, but I'm just doing my own thing. And if they don't like it, well, too bad. Demonetized! <laughs> Okay. Let's try a decal. So I'm going to go find my decals. <laughs> it's exciting to watch what together? Sorry, Major Aznable. Oh, they come together. Yeah, I love it when a plane comes together. Oh yeah, here's the big shiny box. It all came in. It's so big and shiny I can't even show it all on camera at one time. It's always the game of whatever. Tactical squad combat. Skill level two, they claim. Well that's figuring out the game. And yeah, you need clips, but you don't clippers, which you don't necessarily need glue. It's 12 plus. I've I've realized that when a, a game, a board game, says 12 plus, that's like as complicated as it can get. If it says 14 plus, that just means it hasn't been safety tested or it's got naughty things in it, like profanity or whatever adult content. So. Yeah, this is 40k light. Um, just kind of is what it is. Not much of a game. Uh, unless you tweak it or just use it for what, like what I'm doing. Use it for Space Crusade. You could proxy the whole game pretty easily. Because, I mean, I'll, I'll be using the aliens for the gene stealers. I'll be using the necrons for the androids. And then you've got your three Space Marine factions. I've already got orcs. So the only thing I'm missing are the Gretchens and the Chaos Space Marines. And yeah, I could buy those, but as other people have pointed out, it's it's kind of like a long a long road once you go down that. It's like, okay, eventually you're just spending hundreds of dollars and having big piles of gray plastic that you're never going to paint. It's like, nah, I'm just going to cut it off here and say this is good. So I'll be right back. Try my hand at some decals.
Okay, I'm back. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. Yeah, this is the box with Nextron Necrons, it sure is. Necrons are just what they call the androids, so they, they look like Terminator endoskeletons. We've got big guns. So this was the 40k box that was gifted to me. Salt on Black Reach. That's so big it doesn't even fit a camera at once. But it is Warhammer 40,000. It's from 2008, and it was incomplete, but I got it for free. It was a gift, and it had only orcs, only bad guys, which I'm fine with. As a kid, I always liked the monsters better than the, the good guys anyway. I always want to play as the monster character or the robot or whatever. But yeah, you got all these guys that I've been working on. They were like half painted to begin with, and I just kind of added more to them. But I've never played Warhammer 40k and I probably never will. But will I use the parts for other stuff and use these to practice painting with? Sure. See, it's so dark, it's, it's just hard for the camera to focus on it. There we go, get some of that detail, so. Shiny guns and things. Oh, and I've just got oodles and oodles of dice. Um, I've got so many of these little dice. And these, like, range finders, which I never... I mean, I guess I have used them to just say, like, okay, is that line of sight? Yeah, it's line of sight. But, I mean, in the actual game, you're supposed to measure, like, distances between units, because you're just using a regular tabletop. It could be anything. It's not square-based. So it's like, okay, did I shoot him with the right thing, you know, or whatever? some more of these guys so these I, I painted a long time ago but see most of them they they were they were uh, spray primed black and they had maybe the green skin uh, and the some of them had like their teeth painted white and that was about it so I added like all the rest of the stuff to them these are orcs these are ugly guys face only a mother could love but I think according to Warhammer 40k lore they just they're fungus that grows in a lab or something I don't know okay so here oh yeah I'm gonna have to learn how to do metal too because I got this it's monstrosity this metal thing this was inside the box again too because people buy metal stuff to trick it out and it's not made of lead thankfully stopped using lead in 1998. What was this made? I don't know, but it was it was at least 2008. But anyway, I was thinking, oh, I wonder if I could use a soldering iron to like melt that together. Because I guess people have a hard time like with the glue, like it doesn't stick very well and everything and falls apart. So I don't know. Or maybe I'll learn how to do that some someday. I know some people use magnets, but you still gotta glue the magnet to it. So I guess you could solder the magnet in there. Oh yeah, I got this big thing, it's like a big blast radius. This is to tell you like the missile hits and you know your figures in the path of it. But here are the decals. Okay. And these are the decals that are left after whoever took what they wanted from the set. My brother-in-law's friends. Because they were having painting parties and stuff. I know they had a good time, I'm sure. But they were trying to save money, you know, to split up the tasks, save time. Cheers, Dead Gamer. So I got my tweezers. And I've got my gross uh, painting water. Why would you need, like, pure, pristine, clean water for this? So you can watch me fail spectacularly with these. So, Assault on Black Reach transfer sheet. So, all the money I could have gotten by selling this online, I'm going to sacrifice so that I can do my first transfer. So, they're just like little shiny sticker things. Okay, so these are the, for the Ultramarines. Not sure what these are for. 
each faction has its own symbol. This is Imperial Fists. I'm not sure what these are. I don't have a Blood Angels one. That's almost a Blood Angel. Uh, these are for Orcs. These here. And these are like, I guess, divisions or squads or... Ranks? No. I don't know, but what they were saying is... See, I don't think you peel it off. No, here's the instructions right here. You cut it out. Cut it out. And you dip it in water for 30 seconds. See, it's very minimalist. Then you just brush it on. And then you dry it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Can't hear me well. Okay, so I have these transfers. These, they call them uh, transfers or water decals. And I'm going to try putting one of these on. I'm going to try putting one of these smaller, smaller ones onto one of the ultramarines. Actually, maybe I'll try the Imperial Fist first. So I can imagine putting one of these little fist symbols onto the shoulder part. So this would be the right arm. Put it right on there. Just like that. Best way to do it is get your varnish and put it on your area and then get it wet and put it on and then varnish again. Take a paper towel and wick away the moisture and it goes on flawlessly, technically. Interesting. Okay. Okay, I'll take your advice. Um, let me get my cutting tool here. Whoops. Hope you guys can still hear me. All right, one second, I'll be right back. I don't think I'm gonna use my blade. I think I'll just use the scissors. I know, if I had a nice uh, cutting board, <laughs> actual varnish, well, it's clear acrylic is what it really is. This stuff, satin varnish, polyurethane, water-based. What do you think, should I still use it? Uh, Major Asnable. I'm trusting you. That's a few dollars down the drain if, if you're wrong. <laughs> Is it for plastic? Well, let's see. I've been using it for plastic all these years. It doesn't say. I mean, it's in the it's in the same aisle with all these other water-based acrylics that I've been I've been putting them on, you know, styrene and uh, whatever the Hero Quest miniatures are made out of. I've been putting it on that stuff for for a long time now. Hey, if it works, it works exactly. So I kind of feel bad about dulling the super gl high gloss finish, but sacrifices had to be made. Mistakes were made. Now the question is, am I actually going to use that one? So let's uh, consult our little chart here. 26. Where is 26 going to be? I like this music. Thanks, Carl Casey, a white bat audio. Okay, so you look over here. Oh, it's one of the gun hands, of course. Okay, so it's right here. So it's this guy. 26. And it's not an A or B, so I don't think it's an option. It's just, uh, just that gun. Okay. So you said put the varnish on first, then get it wet. like a round circle for 
they're saying you just cut it out like that. It doesn't have to be like perfectly around it. All that stuff you learned in preschool, kids, it pays off. So now I got this tiny little thing. Just wipe all the sweat off my hands. So that's all it is. It's not a peel off. It's going to be red. And it's going to go right here. It probably should orient like that. And so we're going to just apply it with this sloppy brush here. Got our varnish. Now watch me try to do this. Okay, so we're going to get a bunch of that goopy goop. Try to wipe some of it off here. And of course, it's, it's got to get soaked for 30 seconds. So maybe I'll just keep it on the brush for now. Okay, it says get it wet for 30 seconds. Tweezers. Oop. Shoot, where did I drop it? Great, there it is. Visualize it getting wet, soft, and supple. How long does it take? Oh. They say 30 seconds. Oh yeah, this is going to be my future hover tank. I'm going to make one one of these days. Deodorant bar. Can't be brick hard when you put it on. Okay. Alright, so we'll... Uh... It's like, can I do it in the camera? Okay, that was 30 seconds. So now, it says I'm letting it dry, sitting here. Just put some varnish, just kind of right in the center there. And then varnish it up again after, like you suggested. Okay. I can just balance it over the top. Okay. Well, I've got varnish on the brush. Is that going to work? So they say just kind of like brush it right on. Maybe I'll use my dry brush to brush it on. Oh, yeah, it just comes right off. Sticking up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've heard of this happening, so I'll just, just gonna, like, push it on with my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna varnish. Try to smooth it out. It's got that bulging effect. Did I just rub part of it off? Oh shoot, I did. Whoops. Oh, that kind of sucks. Well, not the best job ever. 
Did I not put enough varnish or is it too big? I can see the piece. How many of these do I have? I've got lots more. Yeah, I think I screwed that one up. Can I peel it off or is it too late? Uh, I just cut the scrapes right off. decals room and not the miniature. Okay, well that was not too good. I wonder what did it wrong. Well I applied too much force to it. Well, it was uh, it was like rock hard, like you said. Even though I I had it in the water for 30 seconds, that wasn't enough time, and it was sticking up. So I was like trying to like pat it down with the brush, and like a big chunk of it ripped off. So then I was like, uh, I'm just gonna get the rest of it off. All right, now I gotta paint that section. Oh, the music is so loud. Sorry, that's Carl Casey for you. All right. Yeah, so I think I didn't get the decal wet enough because it was sticking straight up at an angle. And then as I patted it down, like I could see it bubbling and creased on the edges. And as I was trying to smooth it out with my brush, like a big chunk of it ripped off. Um, and then I just kind of gave up and tried to scrape the whole thing off with my fingers here. It's just kind of making a mess now. Oh, okay, so that was my <laughs> that was my uh, failure with the decal. Should I try another one? Well, if I put it on there, it's not going to be clean, but I can still try it. I've got lots of them left. So they gave me, because this is for a whole army. This isn't just for a squad. So let's try another one. So those bits of red are just going to be, I guess, just uh, flavor for the last screw up. Okay. I wonder if I should like swish it around in the water or something. Can you hear me now? That was 30 seconds. So just get it. Got my brush. Oh, I guess I should have had the tweezers. The brush it on. So I guess you're squishing the air out of it, is what you're doing. All right. All right. Put it too, too low. It's 
Okay. It's good. Well, it's like barely on there. If I mess with it too much, it's going to get ripped apart like it did last time. So they show you doing like a, like a piece of paper and like pushing on it or something. ripped it right off again okay so it's just kind of like floating it's not sticking I wonder if it's because of the spray paint I used maybe it's like too like non-stick or something because it's not adhering itself to the plastic it should almost appear as if it melts on it should automatically want to adhere to the surface yeah, I wonder if I throw extra water on it, will that do anything? Or will that just make it melt? Because I feel like it's dry now and it's just kind of resting on top of the plastic. If I ruin another one, I've got lots to spare. Okay, I'm throwing water on it. Now it's just floating. Yeah, the varnish that I originally had on there is gone, so it's there's nothing holding it on there. It's just water. Yeah. I mean, I assume you're supposed to apply it to a painted surface, right? As opposed to bare plastic. I think Mystery Science Theater guys were talking about like, oh, it's really hard to put those on without ripping. All right, they are. All decals should be able to be placed on painted surfaces. Even like a glossy surface, because this is, this is spray paint. It's like ultra high gloss. I mean, is the 30 seconds thing just bogus? Is it supposed to be like a lot longer? Because this did not melt into place. It just kind of folded on there and then it kind of peeled right off. Now it's just kind of sitting there. I can tell that there's water like, underneath it. But if I try to smooth it out... Oh, I get this stuff away from the water. I want to activate all the decals was it prime and then paint uh, it's prime and paint in the same can so I know some people they spray like a matte uh, primer on first and then they let that dry and then they spray their other paint on top but I didn't do that and it's not airbrush so I'm probably doing it very differently than most people I mean, I'm using this stuff. This is not for Warhammer uh, miniatures, but it is for plastics. So, yeah, the primer is already in there. So maybe the decal thing won't work because all of these are using that stuff. Now, maybe not the same ultra high gloss or whatever yeah it's just sitting on there well let me just see what happens if I 
try to put some varnish on top of it. Problem is it's gonna like move around. I don't wanna shred it. Because last time it, it kinda got ripped up. I mean it almost looks like you'd want to put like glue on it or something. Order. Oh, older decals. Well, yeah, it could be the paint is too shiny. Could be the decals are too old. I suppose. Yeah, these are from 2008. They've just been in the box for all these years. Yeah, it's like bubbled up. I mean, eventually that will dry, but there'll be a big bubble. trying to think rubber cement it's alcohol based just afraid of doing too much more to it oh I just destroyed it nope it came off in my hand okay can I get it back on there nope it just stuck to my finger Oh, how sad. Maybe I should just like leave it there. <laughs> should I just leave it there? He ruined it. So yeah, so the Warhammer fans are not going to like me. I, I took a vintage Warhammer thing and I ineptly ruined it and made a, a poor showing. I mean, I suppose I could, like, just paint it in matte, let that dry, and then try it. Try the next one that way. Well, I guess it puts a little bit of damper. I mean, I was going to order a bunch of decals. Of course, newer decals might be might work better. Or they might have the same problem. Hmm. Something to think about. Okay, well, I could try assembling one, I suppose. That'd be the next thing to do. Probably the least amount of effort would be required with the blue ones because I can just clip them out of there and not have to worry about like painting the, the little clip holes. So let me try that next. I'll just put my sorry decal sheet away. I mean, as far as it being exposed to heat, I have no way of knowing... It was just in this little bag inside a box on a shelf. I mean, it wasn't like sitting in the desert or anything, but who knows what it was exposed to over time. Okay, let me go get my clippers. Okay, I'm back. Welcome to the painting craft stream at HeroQuest fans, and you can watch me uh, try to 
find my way around the kitchen. These are the ugly pair of clippers that I've got. Nothing fancy. Came in one of those little tool kits. AK Ultra Matte Varnish. It's Moy Burn Burno. It's matte varnish. Yeah, I do have some matte varnish. I find that the matte stuff, it, it dries out even faster than like the gloss stuff. So I have to really be careful. So this is what I got. And this was super hard to acquire. Like the DuraClear stuff, the satin varnish, it seems like every store has just like, just stacks and stacks of bottles of that stuff. But this, this stuff, hard to find for some reason. <laughs> no bueno. Yeah, like no good. I know that much. Okay. Well, there's a lot more work to be done on these, but for now, I mean, this could be table ready once I clip it and put it together. Let me put this water away. I can see myself dropping pieces into the water. Okay. They also had like a high gloss varnish, but it was sold out. So I don't know what, what the deal is. If it's that good or they just, there isn't much demand for it or what. Cheers, dead gamer. Okay. All right. So I've got these. And what I really should do is make sure I really carefully consult this uh, thing here. Do I want to do the commander first? You know what? Might as well do the commander. Okay. So we need to locate. So there's eight pieces, wow. So we've got three, well, we've got the head. Of course we've got the head, that's five. So we'll put that down there. So the chest piece, oh, I know what that one is. I've been looking at it so much from painting. Nope, that's four. Oh, it's got the, sh the shield on it. Where did I see that? Oh, okay. That's three right there. Okay, so three. So I got to preserve these little these little pegs because those are the things that are going to be clipping it into the deal. Little peg holes. Okay, so I clipped it, not perfectly, but I clipped it. And then right here, there. And then the last one, I can just kind of like twist it off, I think. Yep, came off. Not 100% cleanly, but uh, tiny little nub. Probably should have clipped that too, right guys? Clean it up with my fingernail. Razor blade. Yeah, it's just at the collar, it's like a little dent, okay. So this is part three. Part five is the head. And it's going to be the same on all these. So it's kind of like you do it once, you do it twice, you do it three times. Okay, now we need number two. Oh, that's 12. Oops. Where is two? Here. Two is the leg piece. Oh, here it is, right here. So he's got this bigger leg section. Leg and torso. Big clip right there. It's like, don't cut the blue wire, no! All these Warhammer fans are like, no, don't do it. Oh, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it all wrong. Stop doing it wrong. Well. How am I going to learn if I don't do it wrong, right? 
See, with HeroQuest, you just twisted them off. That's all you had to do. That little, little peg hole. See, at first, with the Necrons, I was thinking, oh, I need, I'll need some extra nub space on there to make it fit better. But it's like, nope, with, with that, it probably makes it harder to fit together. Push fit, they said. Okay. So now I got that beautiful little piece there. You can see some of the original color underneath. So that's two. So that's supposed to go kind of like that. No glue required. Okay. But then the main body is one. One. So we've got one right here. Okay, so that's one. So bright. Okay, this is. Personally, I don't think high gloss looks good on anything unless it's liquid. We're supposed to be liquid, you know what I mean? Takes away from any painted work that you've done. Well, I wasn't sure how glossy the gloss was going to be, but it was all they had at the store, so I just kind of went with it. And I, after I sprayed it, I liked the way it looked. It looked very shiny. But yeah, it may, it may just be harder for other paints to adhere to it. But I didn't really have that problem when I was painting these other acrylics. I mean, I'm used to painting like two, three, four layers to get it just right. But I didn't find I had to do that. It was just like one layer good enough. I don't know if I just load my brushes up that much or, or what. But it was true even with the paint pens. Okay, so that's that little peg hole for the base. So I think, yeah, it's just like a little octagon. Let's see, I'm doing this right. Okay. Clipped him right out of there. So, let me just get a base and make sure I've actually done this correctly. They say these are 32 millimeters. I mean, they're humongous. But then the orc bases that I already have are pretty big anyway, so yeah, they're definitely not like HeroQuest size. They're bigger. They're oversized. Okay, so that guy will go in. Might have to clip that a little bit off. Where's your X-Acto knife? Where's your cutting board? Yeah, I know. What a noob. He's just balancing on his toes. I kind of don't like the dynamic poses. I'd rather have just regular guys standing at attention with their gun. But that's how that how this one came. And so it's like, all right. Looks like this would be really easy to break off. Snap. Oh, I'm just kidding. Push fit. Okay, there he is, bouncing on his toe. Okay, and I need number eight. If you watch this on quadruple speed on the playback, I understand. Number eight. Eight, eight, eight. Wait a minute. Eight is this one. So they give you the option. You can either have the guy with the helmet or, or not. So how is the helmet guy going to go on there? Doesn't make any sense. Unless it fits both of them. But how could it? Well, let's find out, I guess. So that dude right there, push fit, so you've got your little holes there. Oh, I gotta put his arms in too. Oh, 
Or is the helmet like on the side, like he took his helmet off or something? Maybe that's what they're going for. Because the gloss there and the fact that it's also an aerosol, you had a combination that ruined your capability of applying your decal. Maybe. Oh, you've got more to say. Sorry. Let me scroll back up. Um, the best, pri best primer when you're priming with aerosol is the same brand. Well, yeah. It's already in the can. But going further with your modeling, my suggestion would be to never buy gloss primer. The point of primer is for you to next paint job on top to stick if it's a gloss it will not stick therefore it will not it's still not a primer it's a gimmick the flat black well see i do have flat blacks and i do have them same brand rustoleum that you use well here's the thing though what they're claiming is that the primer is in the same can with the paint so you just spray it on and you're done but you're saying that presumably they don't expect you to put anything on top of it that you really are going to say done so maybe that that was my mistake there's a gap but I can't quite tell I'm just going to have to look at the picture and see what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Well, this guy doesn't look like he's got a helmet like hanging off the side. So that makes it seem like the helmet really is an option. Like you can either have the helmet or not have the helmet. But in the picture they show the head I mean, I'm not saying you guys are wrong. It's um, I look for the wisdom of experience. I've never primed stuff before. I've always just slopped the paint right on the plastic. And then I put varnish over the top. Yeah, anytime they say primer plus and all that crap, it's junk. It's a gimmick claim nothing else chemical work is in my nature because it's my job in fact this paint is my art I've learned my lessons well then rust-oleum is a big scam because all their stuff says primer plus paint because otherwise what would you do you'd spray on one coat and then spray another coat on top of it of the same from the same can <laughs> why would you need to do that but the brand with the flat black for plastic is perfect yeah I, w I was worried about like losing detail so I wasn't going to put like layer upon layer, but maybe that's, maybe that's just an exaggerated fear. Okay. So I'll put that one on top here. Oh, that's got to go in there as well. At least the pieces are a little more bulky this time. With the Necrons, I was concerned I was going to break it because like stuff was bending as I was putting it together. Oops, that's backwards. Let's take it off the base. It doesn't need to be on the base at this moment. Yeah, so I just I just be like listening to podcasts and stuff and music while I was trying to piece those guys together and not break them. Steady hands. It's like a, an unhappy baby. He's like, no, why do I gotta be in this thing? On. Stop it. I'm 
Well, I don't want to break it. Snap. See, if I knew it was supposed to like snap, crackle, pop together, I'd like press really hard. There's this gap. Right? What's in the gap? Is that this thing? See, again, it looks like there's an extra piece that's not supposed to be there. Like that? It's like the helmet's hanging off of his belt. They don't show it in the picture. Of course, the picture could be, you know, design's not final. It does look like there's something hanging off of his belt. It's just hard to see what it is. Okay, so this probably comes off then. <laughs> Don't be breaking. We can never get it open again. See, if it does break, I'm just gluing the sucker. But, oh, really clipped it in there. Okay. Fun little stream as I try to pry these pieces apart. crowbar approach. I feel like just kinda ending the stream and be like, you know what? I I had one under the table that's already already cooked, and here you go. I just can't get it apart again. I wonder if some paint on that peg made it fit more snugly than it was supposed to. That's why I'm having trouble getting this apart. Because it's also such a dynamic pose. It's like weird the way it fits together. I definitely don't want to start over on a new, brand new figure. Yeah. And see the other peg that I'm supposed to get at. Painted the interior model, didn't you? Yep, I sure did. So there must be like no give at all, no extra space. Well, it's gloss, it should be able to uh, glide over it. Well, now he'll never try anything new. <laughs> My first foray into, there, got it apart finally. My first foray into um, Warhammer painting. Do everything wrong. It's too hard. Don't want to try it again. Okay. All right. So I got it apart. So they claim this one is supposed to peg in here. I was thinking that was where the arm went. It's 
it's really hard to see where this goes in there. Oh, that's not a peg at all, it's just detail. How is it supposed to go in? Okay, so they show this piece first. With this weird angle. Tell you what, with these Games Workshop models, sometimes I have to actually scrape off a layer on these pegs just to get something to fit right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You could do that. Just trim it, trim to fit. Okay, so it's supposed to go like that. I know this. But then this piece is somehow supposed to go in here. If you're 12 years old, you can get you can figure this out. Like this. It's like so ornate. But see there's like this weird gap there. Just goes in like that maybe. Oh, okay, so it just kind of like hangs on there. I guess that kind of fits. Yeah, it's not very clear from the picture. I mean, they tried, but... But then it's got to be tucked away just enough that this thing can fit on here. See, I thought there were extra helmets. I thought... Well, I guess I could still put like a regular helmet on this guy's head. I wouldn't have to... Or just a helmeted head instead of this crying baby head. Oh, he's got another zit there. Let's clean that up. Okay, so the arms go on last because there's actually pegs sticking out the sides. That part's good at least. But the Necrons, you had to put the arms inside the chest cavity. Which, it was kind of cool that the arms could, like, move around a little bit. But. Yeah, don't play this on a, don't play with this on a beach. Drop it in the sand. Okay, so you got that torso piece. Got two holes there. Two pegs. Should be able to just snap it together, but I had such a problem getting it. Oh, now that piece is coming out. Maybe this isn't lined up right. There's a little nub on there that needs to clean off. Okay, so if I kind of wedge it in there that just can't be in the way of the other pegs <laughs> so yeah if you've got Warhammer fire team this is what you spend your time doing it's like they did it this way on purpose so it would take a long time to put together so you could enjoy your hobby it's like okay I'm gonna do an hour of Warhammer today and just do all this stuff okay so it's supposed to clip together like that and I'll put the head in there. No, not the biz, the biz, oh no. Nicholas Cage is Space Marine Commander. Okay, it looks like it's right, but there's such a gap there. Push it in, it's going to give me the same grief it did last time. Ah, no! Okay, that and that goes there. Okay, I'm going to take your advice. Of course, if I trim the peg too much, it's going to not fit.
Yeah, it's like bent. I'm gonna get my blade. Hold on. Alright, if you're tuning in right now, you might think, what the heck am I watching? What am I listening to? What is this? This is HeroQuest fans, and today I thought I'd do a craft hobby stream, and I would try to assemble these extremely simple, easy Warhammer 40k Fireteam miniatures. Okay, there I'm just scraping paint off. Yeah, an unboxing would have been much easier. I know how to do those. <laughs> Even with no budget. Yeah, I got a pretty good deal. It wasn't the same guy. It was a different guy on uh, Board Game Geek. But once again, those Board Game Geek market things coming through. It's a good deal. Okay, so pretty much all I did was scrape the paint off. I didn't scrape the plastic. Not a lot. A little removal goes a long way. Well, let's see. Okay. So I've got the little helmet on the side thing. So he's got one honor badge. So that entitles him to more equipment. Put that little chest piece on. Gee, I, all that manhandling, I actually rubbed some of the paint off. The I can re-add re the gold, that's okay. Okay, and then put Nicolas Cage's head in there. Don't want to take his face off. Because if we did, then we might have to go on Con Air. And then they take us to the rock. We should be at home raising Arizona. You know. Okay. Ah, see, I want to like grab onto something else and push on it, but then it makes that piece pop out again. See, here's where you. Uh, insert your bardic broadcast meme about only needing like one or two pieces to pop together to make the miniature that's why hero quest is the best it didn't sound like sean connery though okay now just just press as hard as you can and break it in half I think I did it. There's a gap, but who cares? There he is. Ta da! Ah! Not the bees, no, the bees. If you could just see that face. Time. Anytime. <laughs> Only a mother would love. That's right. Okay, well, I'll touch up that, that paint on him later. Now, we got to get the arms. So we got to get seven and six. Well, seven's easy because that's the plasma pistol, I believe. He's the only one that's got one. It would be interesting to play with these guys 
using the weapons that they as they as they're described because white dwarf magazine actually does give rules for like heavy plasma pistols and heavy bolt pistols and chain swords and stuff like that because space crusade didn't come with those those weapons but they gave you like custom rules and stuff and some people have said oh that's so overpowered and whatever but you'd be fighting a lot more necrons and I could put gene stealers as I'd have to make special tiles for them because there's no blip tokens for gene stealers they just come in with the uh, that needs more paint there's no gene stealers in like they only come in the uh, the alien event deck is what I was trying to say couldn't think of what it was Okay, so there's the arm. And that one just should pop right on. Except they put it downward. He's got it like to the side. What's this? Trim the end of that plastic stub there and I can see a couple spots where I missed the paint and I can modify it that's really loose on there very loose Try to scrape it a little bit Yeah, maybe just that tiny bit of, of paint means that it won't fit in there tightly. Because what I'm assuming that they expect you to do is just snap them together and play like that. Or you snap them together first, then you paint them with, like you say, the flat black, then the flat white uh, primer, or just use an airbrush, and then just paint everything by hand. They don't expect you to do it the way I did it. But I wanted it to do it this way, so. Consequences. Oh, it's way back. No? It's like way back on his arm. Like, it's supposed to be behind him somehow. That's yeah, just barely hanging on. Look at that. Normally people would put them together and then paint them. Yeah. Alright, well you know what? I've got some... They said don't use glue. I got sticky tack. Just stick it on there. You know what? No, no. I'm going to stick to my guns here. Looked like it was right. Let's look at the picture again. See, they show it like coming up at his side, like that. It just hangs loosely.
I can't really tell if it's if the peg is too wide for the hole or what. Push fit. Okay, we'll do what I thought I was going to do before. Just put some sticky tack. There. <laughs> can barely tell it's there. Okay. And maybe after like, you know, 18 hours it would fall off or something, but for now it's good. Okay. So next thing we need, and see, I've got to do three more like that. Uh, six. So let's find six. Thanks for joining us on this uh, interesting stream. I may just work on these other ones. I may, I may not do the rest of it live. I may just do it on my own and then just show you how it turned out. Well, I guess I could paint a little more gold on these. Yeah, there's definitely some more details I could add. Okay, so where's number six? We're looking for a chain sword. Oh, there's only so many possibilities. It's kind of hard to see the numbers in the dark paint. Of course, it would have been on the original plastic as well. Okay, this is six right here. And they helpfully underlined it so you don't confuse it with a nine. Okay, cut it there. right here there's where I can add some more gold to cover up that and if I were painting the sword of course it's blue underneath so not much of a deal just like a little chunk of armor just be careful with these knives they're extremely sharp I'll clean off this nub here. Uh oh, yeah, I pushed on that again. Ah, it doesn't. There isn't much hole in it in there. It's definitely not like snap tight. Just clip it. This so time, not putting any pressure on the belt area. chunk out of the rest of it. Okay. Alright, so he's, his sword is to the side. Oops. Yeah, I keep knocking this belt part out. Just put your helmet on your head, man. That's this helmet on the side stuff. Oh, I didn't have time. I was in such a hurry. Sarge, put your helmet on. Did you know there's a war? Okay, that's how it's supposed to go. It's not on there very, very strongly. If I can put them on the base without collapsing the whole structure, the whole house of cards I've created. Our first Space Marine. Ta -da! And now I can just like make a fake video where it looks like I got it done in like 30 seconds or something. Speed assembly. Well, are you guys proud of me? Because I'm proud of me. <laughs> okay, well, just to kind of finish things off. Whoop, you can see there it's not on there very, very well.
can grab some more sticky tack. Be right back. Now see, if I was using the original European formula, the blue tack, rather than one of the many, many, many knockoffs, it'd actually be blue, I think, and uh, wouldn't stand out so much. So we'll just kind of put a big blob of that on there. Perfect. Okay, so now the sword is supposed to extend all the way to the ground. I guess he's holding it backwards. Part just keeps wanting to pop off of the belt. I guess that looks all right like that. He's just like, ah, rushing into battle, screaming like a banshee, barking orders to his men. Okay. And I probably should varnish this with some of that Liquitex. Gold pen. that up. It's like his armor got damaged and he uh, came back to the shop and had it re-gilded. We couldn't re-gild it so he just kind of slapped some paint on there to kind of fix it up. Can't put pressure on it because it's just held together with sticky tack. See, it's like those Gundam markers. Don't need any skills, just a relatively steady hand. say it's not perfect I say you're wrong well okay fine he's a work in progress good enough for the game table happy little space marine we're like an angry little space marine Angriest angel. Well, there he is. <laughs> done. Well done. Chainsword looks like it needs something more. I mean, I know this looks like brilliant blue, like beyond blue. It's it's just the camera, the way the camera looks. It's like beyond blue. I could play with the lighting settings, but... The chain sword, I mean, I could paint it uh, this metallic. It would make it just like a lighter blue, essentially, is what it would do. So like the difference between, let's see the contrast here, between that and the rest, which isn't much. The camera, you can't really tell in person. 
this looks like really light blue but here it's just kind of blended together but yeah so I had to cheat using uh, poster tack yes yeah, so it looks like he just got a head coming out of his, his butt there I mean I could color this uh, this holster something and I could put something on that shield there that heraldry he can turn his head uh, he can kind of swing his arms a little bit but that's just because they don't fit in perfectly he has quite a wingspan with his arms out like that All right, so we'll compare the way the professionals see him. Oh, that pose is completely different versus how I see him. <laughs> so his sword is like way up in the air see if we can fix that would it be easier to do it that way like that ha ha huzzah he's like by the power of gray skull try to get it like the picture and his gun is down to his side That. that's how they have him I mean with glue you could kind of do whatever you wanted you could uh, just pose him I mean he, he looks like he's trying to do Superman he's like dun, 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 dun. of course there you see the blue tack pretty obviously at the joints like he's got padding there but I guess that's what they were going for very dynamic so on the board he's going to look like that Oh, there's the little commander going off to war. There he is. Well, I guess the, the guys that are using magnets, they're doing the same thing. They're just ripping their arms off and throwing them in the box when they're done. So, okay. So, uh, thanks, everybody. Um, <laughs> kind of interesting, uh, this interesting hobby. It definitely requires a lot of time and patience. We'll say that. We'll say that. A lot of concentration, steady hands. So kudos to people who can do it for fun, do it for a living. Um, it's a lot of work. And I, I could understand, like, you know, your army gets destroyed in five minutes. And you're like, man, don't they know how many hundreds of hours I spent, like, you know, getting these guys ready? But this is supposed to be a game for a board game for 12 year olds. So there you go. You, know, you need your dad to help you. All right, yeah, thanks guys for joining us on the stream. Um, we will be back tomorrow. The plan is to do Hero Quest proper from 6 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time US on twitch.tv slash HeroQuestFans. We'll be continuing on the adventure. So we are in Quest 8, uh, the search for the Scepter. That's the, uh, I almost said the Scepter of Ragnos, but that's Jedi Academy. No, this is uh, the Scepter of Glacial Majesty. So we're getting close to the end because the next quest after this one is the two-parter, the nine and ten. So that'll be a long one, and that'll probably take us through March or even April. But yeah, all right. Thanks for joining us, Major Asnable, and all you uh, veteran painters. Uh, you can take your head out of your hands now uh, because I'm done. <laughs> but uh, it's it's fun learning, learning these little techniques. Oh yeah, let's check on our uh, little decal and see how it's doing. If it's as sad as it was before. Yeah, there's like a little bubble in it. Thing is, if I put some more varnish on it, it's gonna like 
it has the potential to loosen it and make it bubble off again. But I mean, it's kind of on there. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well, all of you veteran painters that are uh, laughing at me, I mean, you had to start somewhere too. So just think of that. <laughs> think of that. Appreciate that there's another person in the hobby now with you. Somebody you can give pointers to if you want to. But honestly, after this project, it, this is probably it. I mean, this was, I was thinking this was going to be a one-off. I mean, I'll continue working on these little guys, but I'm not going to go out and buy another, you know, big, huge box of stuff to work on, because it's just, why would I? You can take the head of a needle and poke the edge of the bubble and apply one of your liquids. Oh, okay. Use your brush with the detail. With the decal. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because it's just like a little transparent uh, rubber piece. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the stream. Gons Grimm, welcome. Maddie and Son. Mark Zink. Okay, so we are going to go, we'll, we'll end the stream now, and we'll see if maybe there's somebody we can raid. Uh, so let me just head to my channel on Twitch here. And I forgot to say the usual disclaimer, if you were watching this on YouTube, it wasn't live, but I mean, we're at the end here, so I'm sure you figured that out by now. Okay, so we've got quite a few people. Uh, Wicked Mini Paintings. I think we should go ahead and raid that guy because he's kind of inspired me a lot with the painting. Um, Gareth Hrydmar is another one who inspired me a lot, but I haven't seen him on online, online in quite a while. So hope he's doing okay, whatever he's doing. All right, so thanks everybody uh, for joining us in HeroQuest fans. We'll end the stream and we'll set up our raid here in a moment. Thanks, guys. <laughs>